Hello. How is everyone doing? I trust your day is going well. Welcome to Lyric and Song. You're all welcome. Judah, I see you. Hello. Nah, Anjali. You're all welcome. Welcome to Lyric and Song. Tonight I have a wonderful guest. It's a brother from originally from Ghana but based in Canada. And uh, hey Joe, what's up? <laughs> I'm very expectant to know what God wants to do. As you can see behind me, you can see the Canada flag. <laughs> and uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about tonight. And uh, it's going to be a special time. His song is I Need You, and that's what we'll be talking about today. And there are amazing things that God wants to speak to us about. I can't wait, I can't wait to share with you. My guest will be joining me very soon. Hey, Bo. This is Lyric and Song. Lyric and Song is a platform that um, God has given me to help equip the church for the end time and how we need to pay attention to the songs that are coming out, which is clearly the, the voice of God to us. And um, we trust God. So far, it's been amazing. It's been a wonderful time from inception. We've had amazing ministers of music to come on and I've had incredible testimonies about what God is doing in the lives of the people. So um, tonight is one of the special nights. <laughs> I know you'll be blessed. I know, I know of the truth that your life will not be the same again. And uh, my guest for tonight is Minister Jervis Jogoto. Uh, he's an amazing brother and friend. Uh, I've known him for years. And uh, today he's going to be with us and tell us the mind of God, even in this age, and uh, how the voice of God has become of serious like importance to us and through music, what God wants to do even in this end time. So his song is I Need You, and that's what's playing in the background. It's going to be amazing. So just hang in there. Uh, we'll, he'll be joining me in a bit. We'll be going live very soon. Very soon. Man of God, just yeah. a minute. All right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you, Dulos. Good to see you, my friend. <laughs> Good to see you, man of God. Sorry about that. A little distraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. How, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> I'm good. How are you, too? Good, good, good. I'm excited about tonight. I'm very, I very excited. 
I know, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, good to like, have you. Good to have you. No, I'm I'm glad. I'm happy to be here. Amazing. I'm glad. Amazing. I haven't Amazing. seen you in person for like how many years now? So long. <laughs> yeah. So long. It's been so long. It's been so long. Yeah. And I thank God for what he's doing with you. In mm -hmm. in the nations. I know I know you're in Canada now. As you can see in the background, <laughs> I have the Canadian flag rapid. <laughs> I don't know if it's very, is it visible? Yeah, I can see it. I right. Can see it. <laughs> right. Thank yeah. you. So, ladies and gentlemen, you're all welcome to Lyric and Song. And mm -hmm. uh, Lyric and Song is an amazing platform that um, God is using to reach out to the remnant. And uh, he's preparing us for his coming, the coming um, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ come for his very own and um, this platform is revealing the mind of God as far as music is concerned and uh, what he wants to do with music because of that the spirit of the Lord said I should tell the people to pay attention to the lyrical content of the songs that are coming and which is beyond the melody because we easily get caught up in the melody and we, we, we lose the voice and so the Lord said, put this platform out there and get my people to come on, my people that I've given my words to, to come on and proclaim to the people what exactly I'm saying in, in, in a particular season to them. Yes, so Lyric and Song um, gives the platform for a deeper and thorough breakdown of the lyrical contents and also um, for the inspiration to be shared across Sometimes when you're able to connect with, with the people who wrote the songs or who had the inspiration, you get a different kind of blessing that, 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 that helps you in your transformation journey. So we, we thank God for such a time as this. And I'm glad to have you, my brother, Jervis, <laughs> among many other amazing ministers that have been on this platform. So mm -hmm. people of God, you're welcome. This is powered by Levy Music Reports. It's an indie record label, a Ghanaian record label that um, aims at foster, uh, to foster social cohesion and promote Christian and gospel music across the world. So we thank God for, for what he's doing now and what he's about to do. So, one of God, so you would want to say a quick prayer and then we, we, we begin the session. Yes. Let's do that. Uh, Father, we thank you. Let me put on my earpiece so it's going to be clearer. I don't know if you can hear me well, but let me put on my earpiece. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for today. Uh, we pray for our conversation that you be present with us. We ask for your spirit's leadership in the conversations that we would have. Let's just connect with you and those of uh, the folks that are going to be watching as well. Father, we ask that your heart will be made manifest to all of us. May we be, be able to touch um, the hem of your garment, as it were. May we, mm -hmm. may we feel a surge of your presence and your power with us as we talk about your heart and what mm -hmm. flows out of it. Melodies, music, and its place in our lives right now and what mm -hmm. you call Christian musicians to today in the 21st century and yeah as we just you know really just have fun together and chat mm -hmm. may your presence be with us and may your name be honored in the end we honor you in jesus name amen 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 god bless you yeah. so much bless you All right All right so the the song title is i need you Mm -hmm. So we'll be we'll be we'll be we'll be delving delving deeper into um, the song and and know exactly what God is trying to put across. Mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We would want to we would want to know who who Jervis Jokotu is. So would you tell us who who is Jervis Jokotu? <laughs> <laughs> Jervis is Jervis. <laughs> yeah, like I no, I was born in Ghana. Obviously, yeah, I was born and raised in Ghana. 
Um, but I now live in Canada with my wife and my daughter. And um, yeah, my parents were both in music and Christian ministry very early. So I remember some of my earliest memories was about uh, music and ministry and all that. So we're immersed into the work of the ministry early. Um, my dad had started this music evangelistic ministry they used to call New Creation, which, mm -hmm. you know, when he was in Kumasi, that's what he used to do. We used to go into the high schools. And I remember faintly, because I was very young at that time, going um, into some of those, like they have these annual conferences. And my dad's dream really was that his children will all play musical instruments, that they will be mm. um, musicians and then they'll serve with him on stage. So that was, my, that was really my dad's dream when he had us, you know, it's like, it's almost like a, a joke, but that was his dream when he was getting married. It was mm. like, that's, I want my children to play musical instruments and I, I want them to somehow even play with me on the stage. So my parents were very wow. instrumental in the foundations that we have, Christian and music, all of that, everything in between, they were very, very foundational. So as mm. it stands out, like my sister is a good singer. Um, my brothers are all musicians as well. Like Jerby, who is the producer, who is the one who is producing the album that I'm working right. on. So I Need You is a single from an, an album. Um, and mm. he, he, he is a, you know, a pianist, a brilliant musician who really pushed us yeah. to excellence. Yeah, he pushed us to excellence. He was very, um, you know, intentional about his growth as a musician and pushed all of us. And Jesse, who is also a bassist, uh, an incredible mind when it comes to music and thinking through, mm -hmm. you know, chord structures and substitutions <laughs> and just harmonies. And he's just a musician through and through, Jesse. Um, so that's my, you know, upbringing, my, my home. Um, the things that nurtured my musicality right now. And I'm a guitarist, but I, my dad taught us all kinds of different instruments. I still vividly remember like going for classes with this saxophonist in Winnebat, somewhere east, like um, near Cape Coast. I mean, right. if, if you're in Ghana, you know that. Like Winnebat, that's where we used to stay for a long time, actually in the middle of nowhere, almost like a farmland somewhere. And my dad used to take us to this saxophonist to have these classes. And I remember like some of the days I didn't want to go <laughs> and, and I'll right. go and I still have memories of sitting there and looking at the guy's face. Um, and sometimes the reed that he'll be using, I want to, you know, secretly clean it because I didn't think it was clean. And I have all these memories of music. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that was us. That was us growing up. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. No wonder because, I mean, you guys are all music, very musical. I've worked with all of you, and it's incredible. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful to God for how far you've all come, and and you've contributed immensely to gospel music in Ghana. And we uh, honor him for that. Yeah, we thank yes, God. Yes, yes. All, all three of you have been very instrumental, right from mm -hmm. Joyful Way through to Impact Projects. So, and even on Tech Campus, I know a lot of people look up to you guys. Uh, is it? <laughs> There was a jazz group. What's the name? <laughs> God's Pride. God's that, Pride. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Jesse. Yes. Jesse. I think Jesse set that up. That up. Um, that time, Jerby was out of school, so oh, right. it, it, Jerby wasn't part of that. Um, um, but we also had like you know the three of us plus Junior on the drums. We used to you know, yeah, have yeah, some jazz pieces sessions. that would play. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, wow. so that's it. God's Pride, and I think you used to call it J4. I don't know if you know because we're all J. Oh, okay, yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, interesting. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, so, yeah. um, um, man of God, what inspires you in life? What mm. would you say inspires you in life? I would say, like, at the heart of it is biblical hope and what the Bible actually says about our life on earth. And mm. it gives me a reason to want to look into the future and see what tomorrow, tomorrow holds. Because there's a lot of things the Bible tells us about uh, what God has started in Christ Jesus. He has initiated, mm. he has inaugurated a kingdom that is mm. growing and it's going to come into full expression uh, when this age is over. We live in the overlap of the ages. The old age is, is kind of passing. It's, it's in, in Christ Jesus, something remarkable has happened in history not just you know from a christian 
perspective, something significant has happened. And every historical account of, you know, what are the major events on the earth? Nobody can deny the fact that Jesus is a central historical figure. And um, when he came, something significant happened, but it's like growing. You know, what he inaugurated, his kingdom is growing. And the scripture tells us that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. There's going to be something um, really, it's incredible. I don't know if it's going to happen in my lifetime. It may not. But the hope that I have in what the Bible says keeps me going on, keeps me want to be faithful to God, keeps me want to be faithful to um, Christ, who I've come to know and give my heart to. So that's a big inspiration for me. Um, mm. And I'm also a father of a, an amazing girl. So she, she's also very, yeah, she's, she gives me a lot of inspiration. My daughter, she's called Evangeline. Mm. I, I just mm. look at her face and this, yeah, there's just something about being a father. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Wow. There's just something about being a father that's like, is very powerful. So she inspires me wow. as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. That's good. So very inspiring, actually. Yeah, and there's, there's this question that I, I usually would ask all my guests as mm -hmm. kind of generic, but um, mm -hmm. who is Jesus to you, one of God? Mm. Can you personalize it a bit? Yeah. Well, I can start from what the Bible says, that he's the image of the invisible God mm -hmm. and the firstborn of every creation, that by him all things were made that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible. And He's like God in the flesh. So for me, when I think about Jesus, I'm thinking Lord. I'm thinking Savior. I'm also thinking mm. friend. Um, and just the privilege we have through what he did to have a relationship with God. Um, mm. Because he opened the door. He gave us, we are sinful beings. That We are sinful beings. We've, we've messed up in a thousand different ways. But Jesus opened mm. the door. For us to have access, access, unhindered access, access. to the throne, mm. unhindered access to grace, mm. that we might find grace in time of need. That, that was what Jesus did for us. Many of us can't imagine a dispensation or time where access to God was so limited. Restrictions, so many restrictions. You've got to take your burnt offering. You've got to take your sin offering. Oh, maybe a trespass offering, maybe mm. a fellowship offering, maybe burnt offering. Mm. Think about mm. what it would have meant to be in relationship with God at that time. So many things mm. you needed to do. Purify yourself. Are you impure? Are you pure? Like trying to decide mm. whether you're pure to go before the presence of God and, mm. you know, lest you be struck dead, kind of. Um, yeah. That's what, you know, amazes me that one act in, in the man, Jesus, has paved the, the door, has opened the door for wow. anybody anywhere uh, to actually have access to God. That's who Jesus is. He is he's a way maker. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. The middle wall of partition. Yes, he's it broken all. it down. Yes. He says that his flesh is that big. Mm -hmm. mm. mm. Yes. Mm. Amazing. That's who Amazing. he is. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, let's go a bit deeper. Man of God. Um, mm -hmm. This program is lyric and song. So mm -hmm. obviously we'll, we'll talk about something we got a lyric. But I would want to know how important is the lyric of a song to you? Yeah, like every song is trying to tell a story. You're trying to tell a certain kind of story. And, you know, there's a lot of things that a speech or words could do in a different context, like a sermon or a presentation of some kind. But when you put words to a song, you, you know, you've opened up, the possibilities because music as a vehicle to carry information is very powerful and i don't say that loosely at all because even psychologists and theologians scholars can tell that there's something about music that you know just words um can cannot embody there's just this thing about music and when somebody decides to tell a story with a song you are likely more susceptible to the message of the song, you're likely more able to subconsciously receive, receive it um, if, you know, the song, so there's the melody of the song, 
mm. and then there's the words of the song. Mm. Words are used to convey understanding or co convey something that you know appeals to our understanding. But the melody of the song are, are, is, is appealing to something deeper than your understanding. It's appealing to your heart. Mm. It's calling mm. you into a new state of emotional, like it's like, I want to convey a certain kind of feeling through this song. Mm. So I'm going to mm. use um, the melody and the way I'm, I've arranged the production of the song to convey a certain kind of feeling. You know, some chords, you know, make you sad. If you talk about minor chords, yeah. being something that appeals, like I feel something different about that. So the lyrics of a song are very powerful because all these things are happening underneath the song, but you've chosen to try to appeal to people's understanding through the words that the song is conveying. And for us as Christians, that can be approached in two different ways. Um, there are songs that I write which are more not that scripted, are more, you know, extemporized, mm. very um, spontaneous, like I Need You, actually. Right. So I mm. Need You was not one of those songs that I tried to craft the words intentionally and say, right. I want to, you know, craft. I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to be a little unscripted with this and allow myself mm. to worship God um, just be myself and just worship God and allow the songs to flow along the, allow the song to flow, allow the lyrics to flow. Uh, and you hear it. If you, if you listen to it, um, you would hear like sometimes I just allow the guitar to speak and then I'll yeah. just come in and say, you know, I need you. It's very personal. Uh, so you can approach the lyrics that way, which you're, you're saying, you know what? I have a sense of what I want to do right now. I want to worship God and I don't know what will come out of my, come out of my mouth. I'm going to just allow it to flow. And I'll just speak mm. it. Um, but there's also another approach where you're trying to be very careful and poetic with your language and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, overall, lyrics are very, 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 like, important to um, wow. the effect of a song overall. Yeah. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. Interesting perspective. Guys, I hope you're learning something. This is Lyric and Song, and my guest for tonight is um, Pastor or Minister Jervis Jogoto, an amazing brother of mine. <laughs> and we're, 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 we're building momentum into this session. And, and so stay tuned and stay plugged in. He's a teacher of the words. He's also an amazing... In fact, I don't know. I think he has all the five folks. I, I personally <laughs> think he has all the five folks, but yeah. <laughs> but he's a teacher of the word, predominant. Yes, so um, you'll be hearing some interesting things. Uh, I, know, I know it will bless you. Man of God, what is the purpose of music? And what would you say is the role of the Christian musician in the 21st century? Wow. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, when you, when you think about purpose, you have to go back to the author of all purpose, and that's God himself. And for me as a Christian with my Christian worldview, I start from the Bible. I want to look at where does music pop up first in the Bible? And what's, mm. what's, try, what's, you know, what's the, the text trying to say? Um, mm -hmm. it, would, it would be a, a really long overview if I wanted to go through that. But overall, you can see that there was a very clear purpose for music if you start from the Old Testament. Right. You can see that God had a very important task that music was supposed to fulfill. And as the Old Testament progresses and you go into Exodus and Leviticus, you see that he chooses a specific tribe, the Levites, mm. to be the ones through whom music will be, um, you know, that, that will be their ministry. There will be musicians and priests and all of that. Um, so, when you go into the temple, so now as we go into the Levitical structure and all the things that um, attended to that system there, you see that the Levites were the only ones that were given permission to go close to the ark and to carry it. First Chronicles mm. 15, you can even see, you know, they were the only ones that were given the permission to carry the ark of God. And they were the ones that David had instructed to be musicians. Um, so mm -hmm. there was something that tied being a musician with attending to the glory and the presence of God, which the ark typified. So you're thinking mm -hmm. about 
the purpose of music and you're looking at the temple and you're thinking, I see a priest and I see the Ark of the Covenant, which mm. in those days was the glory carrier, the glory of the Shekinah glory of God literally appeared at the top of this, the seat of that Ark. And the Levites were those who were instructed to carry it. And they were musicians as well. They were, you know, Heman, Jeduthun, and his, his, his folks, they were the ones that instructed to be musicians. Mm. All of the whole, like the whole picture of the Old Testament tabernacle and temple worship and all of that is all about how men approach God in a way that is appropriate. So, right. um, like if you're not a priest, like I said at the beginning, what Jesus has done for us, like if you're not a priest, you can't approach the presence of God, for example, in the Old Testament. Um, yeah. And something shifted over time. Something shifted. And David set up a new system. He removed the veil. He had musicians around the glory. Um, they were the ones who could come close to the glory of God. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and it keeps pro progressing. But there's a, there's a loss in translation from Old Testament into the New Testament when it comes to what worship and music and the glory yeah. all re represents. There's some kind of a loss in translation. But you can tell that God's vision for music was that it will be an instrument of worship. And not, this, not just that, worship that actually invites his presence, that mm. invites, inv invites God, which is why you can think about it that way, that the Levites were the ones carrying the ark of his presence. Yeah, and, and they were musicians. So there's something about stepping into your purpose as a musician that allows people to worship God. And when that worship is done well, you are inviting the glory of God, the presence of God. There's mm. something about the glory, which is God himself, the substance of his person, which um, mm. when music is done well um, and it steps into its ultimate purpose, it can unlock that. It can unlock God's glory. So I would say that mm. in the Old Testament, purpose, overarching purpose was worship. It was an instrument of worship, but it was a particular kind of worship one that would invite the presence of God. And there are several scriptures where you can see that when, when the musicians started to play, the glory came. The glory and the Levites, came, yeah. who were musicians, were the ones carrying the ark, and the ark was a symbol of God's glory. So mm. as we move into the New Testament, there's not a lot about music in the New Testament. There's few scriptures there, you know, and it's not as visible and practical as the Old Testament. So sometimes there's some lost in translation. Um, mm. But in the New Testament... You know, if we could anchor the purpose of music on two texts, you can think of the one that talks about being filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, being filled with the Spirit, then you speak to one another in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Psalms, that. Hymns, and, spiritual songs. and then let the Word of God in Colossians dwell in you richly. Then it talks about similar expressions of music. Um, so the foundation of Christian music is full of the Spirit, full of the Word. Full of the Spirit, mm. full of the Word. Um, That's it. Yes. It's full of the Spirit, full of the Word. That's the foundation. Because the full of the Spirit is, this, is, is what allows your music to be a career of God's presence. And it's the melody. Because right. the Holy Spirit unlocks the wells of creativity in anybody's heart. When you are a Christian, you actually have access to immense artistry. And I, I, I ask people, like, go into the Old Testament temple, and what do you see? Beauty, artistry, glory. Holiness, all, yeah. those things, all those things are there in the temple. When you go there, you can see that God is, he loves beauty. He loves mm. beautiful things. So art, you see it in the temple. So whether mm. it's, you know, drawing or dance, there's a place for art in, in the worship of God that, is, that should not be lost. And I think when we are translating that into the New Testament, sometimes we miss out on it. But when mm. you are fi filled with the Spirit, you allow for that glory aspect, the presence mm. aspect, the holiness of God. Because you, you have to remember, the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that allows us to participate in the holy presence of God. Because mm. in the Old Testament, we couldn't do that. You can't go into the holiness. The, the Levitical order, the whole structure mm. of you know, all the sacrifices you had to bring was because God is holy and we are sinners. We are sinners. We can't approach yeah. God. So you needed a way to enter into his presence so you will not be uh, struck down. Yes. Um, and the Holy Spirit, see, we can't forget that. What happened was that 
when Jesus died, the veil that separated the holiness of God, the glory of God from other people was split open. Oh, into two. Mm. And, and that power presence went, raised Jesus from the dead, started inaugurating a new creation, Oof. and then came upon the disciples and made them holy carriers of the presence of God in the upper room. And now that renewing presence of God is going beyond just the church. It's spreading and mm. it's actually going to bring about cosmic change. The entire mm. globe is going to be renewed by this presence mm. of God. And you see, mm. we have a remarkable privilege as artists to begin mm. to recapture the purpose of art in the restoration mm. of even institutional systems that are out of place. We are talking about systemic change because art mm. and science, go, we go into culture and civilization. Yeah. Like the way societies are organized, there's a big part that art plays. And if we can mm. restore the role of biblical Christian music, I believe that we can begin to have inroads. Bridges will be built into areas where, mm. you know, the Christian message is stopped. It's like you can't mm. come here with your message. But if art mm. can take its full form and full purpose is restored, because glory always attends purpose. When you miss the purpose hey. of God, the glory Why of God won't come. Glory, glory always, of always attends purpose. Mm. When something mm. shifts in its purpose, you, you mar the glory. The, this, the glory. So mm. look at how, how Paul <laughs> di diagnosed, look at how Paul diagnosed the human problem. He says we've sinned and fallen short of the glory. Mm. Mm. The, mm. so, so we've sinned and fallen short of the glory. To sin is to miss the mark. It is, you miss the mark. Some, you've missed it. You, you've mm. missed the mark. And he said because of that, you've also fallen short of the glory of God. When you miss God's order and purpose for your life, you, you, you can't, the glory of God, you can't, it, it's not possible for the glory of God to attend to that when you miss My the mark, which is, which is why when the, the ark was stolen, remember the, you know, the story of the Philistines stealing the ark, they took it to war mm. uh, and yeah. they took the, the ark was, you know, the ark, which is the symbol of God's presence in the Old Testament. Um, it's the center of worship, actually. All the worship mm. happened in the, temp, in the temple because the ark was My there. Goodness. That's because worship is unto God. We don't worship ourselves. Mm. We don't worship things. We worship God. Mm -hmm. And so they were worshiping around the presence. And, and, and all the sacrifices were because the presence was there. You know, you, you can't go without all that, you know, cleansing and all that. Uh, but mm. the, the, the point is that the glory, the presence of God must be restored with due order. Due order. When you miss the mark along the way, the glory stops and you stifle the glory of God. Mm. I, I must say that that's probably why a lot of us aren't seeing like real glorious presence of God and in power. our music. Yes, because some things are amiss and we don't see it physically because the things that mm. are amiss sometimes are the things of the heart. There are too many idols of our hearts. The idols mm. of our hearts are the things that clog the movement of God. The Bible says that out of the heart I'm flows say, all... Say that again. Say that again. Sorry. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> the... said something clogs the glory of God. Yes, like the Bible says that out of the heart flows all the issues of life. Mm. The heart of a man is the center of your life. It's actually who you are on the inside. People can see things on the outside. The Bible says that God looks at the heart, not the, on the outside. Men look on the outside. So mm. if you're a musician and you have unattended motivations that are far from God's highest purpose for your life, your motivation is money, remuneration, thanks, thanks for men, applause for men, more followers, more glory. Like all those things actually limit Jesus. God from working in people's life. So what happens is that you are standing there mm. with lyrics and melodies, but your heart is not right. So what happens is, happens is that the life flu that must come is clogged. It has been stifled. It has mm. been stifled. So you can't have the glory as God wants it to be. Cool, because there are too many idols in people's hearts. An idol is anything that you, you want to do for you, mm. what only God too can do. Too many idols. Too yes. many idols. Too many idols. My goodness. Yeah. And this My is why... Goodness the translation is missing because the Old Testament music was always associated with the glory of God. I mean, there are other scattered you know, options that you can pull and say, okay, this is not associated with the glory. But when you look at the very heart of it, music and the temple worship were in inseparable. But mm. when you come into the New Testament, because now the veil is open and the presence is now, you know, the glory of God accessible. is accessible, it's almost like there are too many options. You don't know where, where, where do you find We've God? We've missed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've missed it. It's like, God, are you, are you in me? Are you around me? Are you? And the mm, thing is, come on. The, the, <laughs> the, 
because the immanence and the transcendence of God. Hey, yeah, that has in and yes. out. <laughs> yes. Within and without. Yes, My because, goodness. you know, the study of pneumatology, there's, a, there's been a re renaissance of the study of the, the Holy Spirit, even amongst theologians, because people have begun to see that the church is going in a certain direction. Mm. The church is going in a certain direction. Since the 1900s, the early 1900s, there's something that mm. happened. Many of you are aware of the Azusa Street Revival. Yes. That, that was the beginning of the a global move of the Holy Spirit, which proliferated into what they call new, new Pentecostal movement and charismatic yes. revivals in the 1960s, broke out into the healing mm. waves and all the things that we've seen over the years. And now almost every denomination has experienced some kind of a touch of the Holy Spirit. But then, mm. and most of it are in the global south. Global south, I mean Africa, Latin America, Asia. Those places are the people, are the places where the glory and the Holy Spirit is invited into Christian worship. Other places in the West, you see, they, they, I think we've become so sophisticated in the West that we think that we don't need God. So what's happening mm. is that the growth of Christianity has shifted from West to the rest. And now the rest are bringing the gospel back to the West because the glory... Mm. They've invited mm. the, their presence. And so churches are growing in leaps and bounds. And then in the West, churches are diminishing in their numbers. Yeah. It's important we remember that. It's because you can't have church without the Spirit. You can't have authentic mm. Christianity without the Holy Spirit. But here's the main point. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of God is embodied in the church. Yes, that's true. We are the temple. Paul says it seven times. We are the temple of God. Mm. But, but... He is also the breath that animates every living being. Mm. So, so we see in Genesis that God breathed in a man. The Ruach is the, Holy, is the Spirit. And mm. he, came, he became a living being. So in some ways, the Holy Spirit is all around us. Mm. So here, this is why it's like, now a lot of writings around the Holy Spirit, like the, 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 the renaissance of the, like I talk about, the Holy, renaissance of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy, like in theological circles and stuff is that, they're beginning mm. to see that, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit and his work is bigger and broader than we've seen it. And mm. what's happening is that since Acts 2, the presence of God, the, the glory, the Holy Spirit came on the disciples and the history of the church, we've seen a lot of things happening. In the 1900s, there was a major move of the Spirit and the word about the Holy Spirit's prominence has started growing again. And people are watching and they're like, Okay, but it's diminishing in the West, but it's growing all over. And something mm. is happening. They believe that somehow the renewal of the earth is connected. And I said it earlier, it's connected with the work of the Holy Spirit. And I think that mm. Christians have a big role to play in that. And artists in particular. I won't go into all of that, but it's important that we know that the Holy Spirit is about a work that is bigger than just you and I, just as Christians. And he's actually renewing the whole earth. Mm -hmm. um, so our neighborhoods, our cities are going to experience some kind of reformation and all of it will be done and led by the Holy Spirit. And I think that there is, mm -hmm. there is a coming move of the Spirit which will actually restore within Christian sensibilities the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think musicians have a part to play in it. Musicians have to have mm -hmm. a part. Because the order has, like purpose has to be restored. So going back to the purpose, purpose mm -hmm. has to be restored. If Christian musicians can see how lofty our, our assignment is. When I say lofty, it's not earthbound. You're not thinking mm. about how many followers you get. You're not thinking mm. about how much money you can make. It's mm. bigger than that. It's a privilege mm. we have. We have to go back and say to God, what is the art you've given me? What's the place mm. in your mission in the 21st century? What do you want to do with the art you've given me? And you begin to see things. God wants to build bridges between the church and the cultures around us. He wants to build bridges. And he wants to use musicians to do that. He wants to build inroads into places where the gospel has been shut. And I believe the, arts, the mm. art has a place to play in that. But you, mm. think, you see, it won't have the same power if, like I said, we are, we are stopping the flow because of our motivations. The heart mm. is so crucial to God. Why you do something, that's purpose. Purpose. Mm. Why? Why is a purpose statement? Mm. Why? The why mm. you do something why, do you, mm. why did you release that album? Why did you release mm. that single? And you see, mm. sometimes people aren't talking about it. So you feel like, oh, okay, maybe I can just do it because it's nice. And mm. there's, there's something entertaining and therapeutic about music, but that's not the purpose of music when you come to the, when you're looking at the biblical worldview. 
and, I, and I'm very convicted about that, that there's going to be the restoration of the place of the art and music in the church. Mm. That will be part mm. of God's program for the end time, end time revival. Wow. Yes. Wow. But the purpose has to be restored. Purpose. And oh, part of it is that it would change the way we approach music. It would change the way we approach God and his presence. Because we know that mm. we are holding something. It's a sacred trust we've been given as Christians. Especially musicians. Mm. Sacred trust. Mm. Sacred I'll, trust. I'll stop there. Yes. Wow. Man of God, it's interesting that you are saying these things. Because um, I remember I was mentioning to you about what the Spirit of the Lord told me about the fivefold ministry transcending into mm -hmm. the music ministry and we know we have the teaching the the, the, the teachers mm -hmm. we have the preachers we have the apostles we have the mm -hmm. evangelists and we have the preachers and the lord says mm -hmm. that the new wave that is coming will see the offices unfolding themselves mm. in the music ministry so mm. you you actually see music ministers functioning and operating in the prophetic and you will see it. Hallelujah. You see it in their lyrics. You will see it in 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 the commands that they 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 are having, and 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 the impacts that will be coming. So you see mm. music ministers who are apostles, and their 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 songs are raising up souls and people who are dead and have 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 left the Lord. So this mm. is going to be a whole move and a whole wave. So I think it ties directly into the purpose. The renewal of purpose that is coming. Yes. And one of the key things that, that the Lord mentioned is that the church is kind of have missed it, like you said. So music is going to be like a sickle for harvest mm. in God's mm. hands. And 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 the fivefold ministry will express itself mm. Mm. fully. Mm. Fully, fully. So there'll be teachers of music that'll be rising up, there'll be prophets of music, mm. there'll be apostles of music, there'll mm. be teachers of music, there'll be preachers of music, evangelists of music, and we'll see them in their lyrical content, we'll see mm. them in their, in their expression, the expression of their ministry, mm. diversity by his one spirit. Mm. And, and mm. I, don't know, I don't know if you want to say something about this, but... Yeah, like, you see glimpses of that in the Old Testament, like First Chronicles mm. 25, verse 1, for example. David and the army commanders appointed the sons of Asaph, Haman, Jeduthun to serve as prophets with mm. lyres, harps, and cymbals. To serve as mm. prophets. <laughs> mm. see, to serve as prophets. But these were Levites. Yes. Yes. These were Levites. And God and is restoring you, this. You can also see glimpses of that with the... You think of an evangelistic campaign, for example. You think of uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. When they were going against the armies, I'm trying to remember um, uh, what's the name of this guy. He put musicians at the front. Mm, yes. <laughs> and the vision was that, okay, the musicians are actually going to go ahead of us and fight those battles. And, and obviously, there are images of evangelistic campaigns. Obviously, I'm not talking about you know, physical conquest and some of the, you know, Christian mission has a lot of things that, you know, it's known for. That's not what I'm talking about. Like we've missed it mm. in the history of the church. Sometimes mm. we are going with the gospel and we are going with, you see, cross-cultural humility was missing. We go into another mm. culture and we think that our culture is superior. There's a lot of things that I'm mm. going to because there's, God is also restoring understanding that the gospel has universal application, but it doesn't remove the particularity of the people that you are bringing the message to. It transforms right. their culture, but it does not say to them that, let go of your culture, let go of your kind and of mute, and mm. embrace our superior Western or whatever mm. culture. No, no, That's, that wasn't part of God's plan. So I'm not talking about um, that when I'm using the image of musicians going ahead of the army because of the the image of war and fight. I'm not saying go with this kind of superiority mindset. Right. That's not what God's going to do. But it's a supernatural battle. The gospel mm. has power to save. The gospel mm. generates its own power. We don't have to force it. The gospel generates mm. its own power. That has an ability to save. The gospel generates its own power. Amen. Yes. 
We don't have to force it. We don't have to add our own, you know, which is why Paul says, when I came to you, I came not with, you know, the bells and the whistles. Of yes. Wisdom. <laughs> yes. You know, all the things we want to add to, to make it look beautiful. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> the, the, you know, the gospel can be carried with beauty. God loves beauty and all that. But the power mm. to save is in the gospel itself. And I think that mm. some mm. something is there. You know, there's something there about that campaign where the musicians were ahead. And mm. the battle was won. And this is what mm. the Lord said. The battle is the Lord's. Mm. The battle is the Lord's. But mm. let the musicians go. So as they worshipped God, God stepped in and fought. Wow. Wow. As they worshipped wow. God, God stepped wow. in and fought. Wow. Wow. Man of God, I want us to take two minutes. Okay. Go, yeah. Anyone, yes. anyone watching us right now, I want us to deal mm. with the idols. Mm. We can do the that. Idols that are standing in the way mm. of God's glory. Wow. You see, yes. you see, there are hidden idols. Some of them, mm. we, we, mm. we, 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 <laughs> people of God, wherever you are, just, just begin to speak to God right now. Oh, just tell him, Father, take away any hidden idol. Yes. That is standing in the way of your glory. Wow. wow, see, wow, you, don't, wow. Ne- you don't necessarily have to be a music minister or anything. No, 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 no. Yeah. You see, worship goes beyond music. So yes, it, it's our whole life, the expression of our life unto God yes. as a living sacrifice. So yes. wherever you are, just just speak to God right now and just tell Him, Father, take away mm. idol, any hidden idol. Some we are aware of, some we are not aware of. Yes. But if you want to take in the next two minutes, just just speak to God wherever you are. Yes. Yes. God, I ask you. So, Dulos, can I? One of them. Yes. I think that it's also important for us to understand what idols are. So I want to just so yes, that we just can. Go, that. Yes. Yes. So when we are when we are praying, you can begin to think about to be specific. What, exactly. Because here's the thing: sometimes when we think about idols, we are thinking of something primitive. This thing that is dead that you're worshiping. Physically. Idolatry. Yes. Mm. Obviously, that's idolatry. <laughs> Right now, the idols of the heart are different. An idol can be anything. Many people think an idol, yes, and many people also think an idol is a bad thing. Mm. But that's where they are wrong. The greater the good, the more likely to expect it to satisfy our deepest human needs and hopes. Mm. So anything can serve as an idol, especially the good things in life. Mm. The especially we don't want to let go. Yes. Oh, so an idol can be anything more important to you than God. It can be a good thing. It's something you seek to give you what only God can give you. Mm. (laughs) It's anything so central and essential in your life that if you lose it, your life will feel worth not living. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. So, Father, (laughs) as we go before God, you're saying, Lord, what are those things? Because the, the human heart... It's, like it's an idol factory. Some, Tim Keller said that. It's an idol factory. Mm. It, can, it can take good things in life and make them ultimate things. Make them, yeah. And that's when it becomes an idol. So when we go mm. before God, we're like, Lord, what is it about my life that if I lose, I'll think my life is worth not living. Mm. And then we're asking mm. God, could you show me what should be my ultimate in life mm. and I, it goes right to the song there's a lot of things mm. coming to me because the song says i need you mm. and it's an expression of worship it's an expression of if i lose my job if i lose my money if i lose my well-being mm. if i lose anything and everything mm. and i have you i have everything mm. so i have everything if i have you but if I, mm. if I actually don't have you and I have everything, I actually have nothing. Wow. So when dealing with the idols of the heart, we are going back to the place where we see how much we need our God. Total dependence. Yes. The image of Jacob comes to mind as well. I was chatting with a friend recently and we talked about it. That when you go and look at the story of Jacob going to the presence of God and wrestling, and then he comes out with a dislocated hip bone which was the core yeah. of his strength, his human strength. And I like what one pastor said that 
It represents our human strength. When you wrestle mm. with God appropriately, you will come out losing your sense of human strength. And depending mm. on, you'll be walking on limp. But the limp is <laughs> an indication that you need him. Of your step. weakness. Can't yes. take those <laughs> you, you need him every step of the way. <laughs> Wow. So wow. Let's, we can, let's go to God in prayer together. Yes, 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 yes. We have two minutes to do that. People of God, yes, let's Lord. take advantage of this moment and speak to God. Tell him any we idol, any good thing in our lives that mm. makes us seem so worthy and, and that replaces the place of God in our lives. You want to come to God. Right? Speak to the Lord wherever you are and ask him. We are praying, we are praying that the Lord will take away any idol, the idols of our hearts. Yeah, you can write that, that in the in. comments. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Join Thank us to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Take away any idol. Thank you, Jesus. Any idol. Yes, Lord. Father, forgive us for God for idolizing material things, for idolizing good things in our lives and and forgetting that you are our ultimate yes lord help you are all our ultimate need yeah help us holy spirit yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord, yes, lord. father deal with the idols of our hearts in the name of jesus thank you yes lord. speak to god wherever you are just surrender to the lord you have you, this is an opportunity to turn on a new page with the Lord and just tell him, Father, kill any yes. idol, destroy and demolish any idol of my heart mm. that is standing in the way of your glory and the expression of yourself. Mm. Tell mm. me, in the name of Jesus, anything that we are holding yes. on to, so dear to our hearts, it could be sin, it could be. Any good thing that we we magnify above the knowledge of God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. So Help us. Enough. Help us. Help us. We all come Jesus. with a disjointed hip bone, mm. relying completely on your strength. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. You. Help us, Lord. Amen. 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 Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Because you, you worship what is an idol in your heart. That's what you actually worship, whether we acknowledge mm. it or not. Self-worship. That, yeah, that, 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 that becomes the item of your worship. And that's why our whole conversation about music and worship and the restoration mm. of the glory is so crucial. Yes. And because music goes to the heart. They're intertwined. They're all connected. Because when worship is misplaced. The object of your worship is misplaced. You're mm. not necessarily physically worshiping money, mm. but because the object of your worship has been displaced, you can't receive the glory that comes with true worship. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can't. Because the object of your worship has been misplaced, you can't receive the glory of true worship. My yes. You can't. It's oh spiritually goodness. and biblically impossible. It's not mm. possible. God can violate his, way, his ways and bow to our ways because, you know, he's compromised, but, you know, let me just, you know, come small. No, it's very, that's, that's why this has to be dealt with. And I feel so strongly that there are people that God mm. wants to awaken to the reality that they are part of his agenda for the end time. Yes, the remnant. But their hands are full. And he says that mm. empty it because I want to fill empty it. it. Thank you. Jesus. Their hands are full, which, which takes me back to the consecration that happens for the priests and the musicians mm. before they start ministering. Mm. We have to restore the message of know. consecration. Yes. Make, your hands must be empty. Your heart must be open to God alone. It must only respond to the impulses of God's prompting. You see, sometimes yes, when people thank you or people say bad things against you, it's very painful. But you can get to a place where you ask God, God, be the strength of my heart. May I depend only on your affirmation and not human be mm. a human being's commendation. Mm. May I not seek human affirmation. Mm. May I, it's not easy for a man to get there, but you, we can. 
Because God wants mm. to use you. God wants to use you. Mm. <laughs> we honor you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, yeah. man of God, we'll, we'll continue this. <laughs> there are different things coming. I'm telling you, there are different. Guys, I hope you're being blessed. I am this session. I just knew that this session would be something else. I'm already having it. My share of, of the impact. Wow. Man of God, we want to talk mm. about the rest of God. Mm. What is the rest of God and how do we learn to rest in God, especially when things are turbulent, difficult, oh. and seem hopeless? That's a very packed one. But let, let's mm. start from the beginning. I like to start from the Bible and I like to start from the beginning. God made the first human beings and he put them in a garden that he had planted. Mm. They did not need to plant again. He had planted mm. the whole place. You know, think about a garden that God planted. I want to see it. My wife has a garden at the backyard and it's beautiful. I look at them mm. like, man, you have an eye for beauty, you know. But think about the God that created everything we admire. We go to tourist sites to look at canyons and waterfalls because it's nice for the eye. Think about mm-hmm. God saying that I want to make a garden for a man and his wife, the first, you know, our first parents. Mm-hmm. He places them in the garden and the responsibility was for them to take care of what he has already freely given. That's rest. Mm. You see, for some reason, they felt that it was not enough to sit in God's rest. So they, they, they were like, you know what? This tree that God says, you should, you know, no knowledge of good and evil. They wanted to now begin to frame their world their own way and say, you know, maybe I have to, I have to know how to do this so that I can. And there's a lot of things we can learn about what happened in the Garden of Eden, but it's the starting place. That's, that, that was the, you can think of that space as the rest of God. God put the first humans there and told them, just, just enjoy. Just enjoy everything. Accept this thing. But enjoy everything. Accept that guy. Accept that tree. Accept that fruit. But they decided, you know, I'm going to do the exact opposite. And I think that's when we lost our rest. That was the beginning mm. when men, men lost our rest. Because mm. we now lost the paradise of God's rest. The Lord said, come out. So when he... T- when he told Adam and Eve and Cain and all that, get away from my presence. You see, God's presence is in the rest. Mm. And I think that we are still restoring that rest. And there's a lot that Jesus has done and we'll probably come to it if we have more time. But it's important for us to remember that in the rest of God, we cease from our works. Mm. In the rest of God, the presence of God is there. In the rest of mm. God, we lean, we lean on his grace. In the rest mm. of God, we take up our faith. We don't live by sight. We live by faith. That's mm. when, when you live by faith, you are entering into the rest of God, which is wow. why the writer, the writer of Hebrews says that they could not enter because of unbelief. unbelief. They could not hey. enter the rest because of unbelief. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter three and four. When you read it, you would understand. They could not enter into the rest of God mm. because of unbelief. of unbelief. So when you want rest, and this is not just physical rest where I'm sleeping. I'm like, you know, my body's tired. We are talking mm. about something deep, deep. And God wants that for all of us. God wants mm. all of us to be in his rest. But mm. we lose our rest. We lose our rest when we take up unbelief. What's unbelief? God has said something, but you don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. <laughs> it's as simple as that. God has said something, but you don't believe it. You need Ooh. proof. You need so many mm, proof. You doubt need, it, Thomas. Yes, you need, <laughs> <laughs> you need. You see, when you live that way, you can't rest. Because mm. you're always looking for an external attestation to what has already been said. And evidence. Yes. Eventually, your faith will bring living proofs. But that's not the starting point. Mm. We've turned it the other way around. Yes. Believe and then you will see. Some say, I see before I believe. But mm. biblically, we have to believe God first. And then we're going to see mm. him step into the situation. Because here's the thing. You, you, it's like fighting allegiance. Who is in charge here? Is it God or is you? That's the question God mm. is asking. Faith mm. says that, God, you are in charge. And God said, okay, I'll step in and work for you. I'll work. And I'll, I'll... That's what a miracle is. He changes the mm. order of natural science. He breaks mm. the laws of nature. 
and he says that, you know what, I'm going to heal. I'm going to work this miracle. Mm. That's what a miracle is. It's actually, every miracle mm. is a sign. Thank you. It's, it's a sign. It's pointing to a higher reality. A, a miracle oh, is a sign. It's pointing to a higher reality. And I think mm. that even the book of John that talks about awesome. all the signs, because obviously the book of John is about signs. The way God mm. revealed himself through signs. Signs. Mm. We wouldn't see the kind of signs and wonders that God has earmarked the church for if we live in unbelief. Many of us don't believe that God is a miracle-working God. We don't believe it. Mm. If you don't believe, you can't enter into his rest. And if you don't enter mm. into his rest, you can't see the miracles. Mm. The, you can't see God stepping into your situation and changing things on your behalf. Because mm. you, are, you are taking things for your own. It's like, I can do this on my own. Adam, Eve, and it's like the devil is whispering things. Look mm. at how Jesus dealt with the devil. He says it is written. <laughs> mm, yeah i was coming to ask you that how can we increase our faith in god how can we grow our faith and our now, trust in him? it's a good it's a good question because there are different qualities and quantities of faith according to the bible and somebody did not realize it but that's it jesus says i've never seen such great faith and jesus also said oh ye little people of little faith so he's jesus says great faith and little faith and little so there are different faith. there are different quantities and qualities of faith which mm. is i think is also missing in sometimes of our a Christian theology, because you think as, mm. long, as long as you have salvific faith in Christ, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's common faith. Everybody has it. It's actually a gift. <laughs> I won't talk about it, but actually that is also a gift. The faith we have in Jesus to be saved is a gift. But then... That how how faith, is that different from... Sorry, how is that different from the fruit of the Spirit? So, yeah, this, um, yeah it's connect. Yeah. So, when you believe in Jesus, your heart now says that, you know what? I believe that God came down. And when he came, he did a lot of powerful things. And he died. And actually, he mm. was raised from the dead. For me. Hallelujah. I, co I confess it and I'm, and I'm, and I'm saved. That's, shut your heart says that you believe all these things. And then the Bible says that you are saved. saved. Yes. Mm. And, and, and you're saved. But after you have stepped into the community of the believing, the, the believing mm. community, you're now... Mm part of it the household of faith yes household of faith i love that mm. how do you grow your faith the word of god <laughs> living the living word and the written word now the living word you nurture your relationship with with the father through the spirit looking to jesus mm. face the trinity mm. you see and your faith grows in god relationally mm. I, I i want to talk about the way faith and love are related Mm. Because in God's mind, like these three things, faith, hope, and love, are the Bible calls them eternal virtues. They are, they are mm. so powerful and mm. they work together. Uh -huh. mm. Faith, hope, and love. So our faith is tried when we go through troubles, you know. And during those moments of trial, Paul says mm. that we have something called the patience of hope. So mm. faith, mm -hmm. faith, you have faith in Christ. You are now in the, in the church. Then something bad happens. Something Paul says is that we don't only have to be grateful for faith. We have to thank God for hope. Mm. And, and, I, and, and the reason he says mm. that is this. Let, let me just quote this so that you can understand in context, biblical context. I'm mm. talking about the relationship between faith, hope, and love. It's crucial mm. for us to understand how we grow in faith as a, as a church. Mm. Mm. Paul says in Romans 5 verse 1, mm. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have mm. peace with God through our Lord and Savior mm. Jesus Christ, by right. whom also we have obtained access by faith into this grace wherein we stand in hope of the glory of God. Then he says, mm. but not only this, but we glory also in our tribulation, knowing that tribulation mm -hmm. works patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope makes not at a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts shed by the Holy Spirit which is hearts. given unto us. That is what Paul is saying that faith makes us justified. So Old Testament you have to do a lot of things for you to be justified before God. You have to bring the sacrifice. You have to do this thing. You have to do, 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 do. And now Jesus says that, listen, the do should not come ahead. I can do it for you. I came and I died for you. So now believe that I've done mm. it. Believe. And that's faith. Mm. You enter into righteousness by faith. And Paul calls it that now you've been justified by faith. You have peace with God. We can have easy access to God. I mentioned that earlier in the, in the, in the call. How access to God has been you know, purchased for us and obtained for us by Jesus. So faith is what gives us that access. Faith mm. is what gives us the privilege of now being able to go to God 
and not have to think about all the things I need to do. Mm. Rest is still there. Rest mm. is faith. You're not thinking about what I have to do, you know. When you're thinking about all the things you have to do, you can't rest, obviously. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> True. Jesus. So, My so goodness. Faith makes us justified. And I think Christians need to remember the basis of our justification is faith. Yes, that's so true. But here's where, here's where we also miss it. And I want to say this because I know the different denominational streams that may end up watching this and sometimes people get it wrong. Faith is opposed to works, but sometimes we get it wrong, especially after the Protestant Reformation and you know, Luther's theology and we've all built up on it, especially in the West and other parts of the world. We've built on that and we forget that it's the beginning. Mm. Just if, being justified by faith is the beginning because God will begin to do something in you that will produce works. Now, the works that are produced out of you, it makes God righteous in justifying you in the first place because a holy God justifying a sinner, there's, a, there's something wrong, right? It's like, oh, I'm a sinner, but God has justified me because somebody has died on my, in my place. That's the reason. But then the Lord says that I'm not going to leave you as a sinner. I'm going to do some work in you that in, through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, here we're going to the fruits of the Spirit, you begin to embody the character of Christ. And now mm. you can be patient you can be loving, you can be kind, and the list goes on, but the ultimate is love. You embody God's nature of love to the extent that you don't keep record of evil. How many of you don't keep record of evil? There are lots of us, we keep so many records of evil. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, love does not keep record of evil. The character of the Lord Jesus, he saw the woman that was taken up in adultery, and he says that, you know what? Mm. I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. You see, he did not take the record of evil, but then he empowered her. He said, go and sin no more. There's a part of the, the theology of faith and, you know, that we need to understand that is the starting point. And it's an important starting point, but God's vision is that his new earth, he doesn't want to mess it up with people who don't know how to live right. So mm. we, have been made, we have been made right so that we can enter into this new beautiful kingdom that he's building. Mm. And the reason is that the process of salvation, which first involves us saying yes to Jesus mm. by faith, our spirit is renewed, he's transforming us. So eventually mm. our bodies, our bodies, because our, we still have the propensity to sin in our bodies. So you are right. kind of living, you are living as a, a Christian, but you still have the motions of sin, Romans 7, working in your members. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. it's, yeah. it, it, even in a Jewish context, some seem to be a Jewish thing he was saying in Romans 7, that the motions of the, you know, and the good I want to do, I can't do, but the evil I don't want to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying a lot of things, but the main thing is that mm. faith requires that we believe what God has done. It puts us to rest. But when our faith is tested, Paul speaks of something called the hope, the patience of hope. But that hope is mm. anchored in what God has already done. So Paul says to us that My if God gave us his son while we were sinners, think about it. He says that even for a righteous person, Maybe a few people will die. For a good person, nobody will die. But think about it. For right. a sinner, God died. Then Paul is making a point. He's making a point. He's saying that because God died when we were sinners, died for us when mm. we were sinners, we didn't deserve it. Obviously, that's what he's trying to say. We didn't deserve it. There's no boasting. We can't say we deserved it. No, we were sinners. How many of you were there when Jesus died? Many of us, we didn't, we're not there. But our sins were paid for at that time. We were all sinners. Right. You know, and then what Jesus has done for us now has become the guarantee that God will do anything for us even now. Now that we have become righteous by faith, Paul says that we must even be more assured of the glory that is coming. Mm. Because when we were sinners, he died for us. Now that we've been how justified by faith, how much more <laughs> will he not glorify us in the future? That but that message is important for us because as Christians, we will go through trouble. Yeah. And Paul says that when you, a faith person goes through trials, remember that's the patience of hope. Remember that God has planned glory for us. Rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Rejoice. Rejoice mm. in hope of the glory. Actually boast in the glory of God. That actually mm. boast that you are going to be made participants of the glory. Mm. So when we go through trials as Christians, Paul says rejoice. The reason is that it's working something in us. And he calls it the patience of hope. The endurance of hope. Mm. It's refining our character. Is, is making us begin to think about God in a certain mm. way. 
We're like, and Paul Thank calls it, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. So we see faith yeah, over love all in Romans 5. Read the first few mm. verses of Romans 5. We see that faith justifies mm. us and then the this patience so of hope. Beautiful. And then the love of My God is shed abroad in our heart. The mm. love of God is shed abroad in our heart. And the reason is this. Mm. The Holy Spirit makes us know of the love of God when we go through trials. The Holy Spirit, mm. he begins to convict us that God's love mm. is stronger. That's why Paul continues and says that, I'm persuaded that neither life nor death no, can separate us from the love. He's explaining that what will happen to our convictions when we go through mm. the stuff that he has gone wow. through to get he, to, get he to he that place. He mentioned that if your conscience condemns you, <laughs> God is greater than your conscience. Oh, man. I know. Amazing. Like, what a joy to be justified by faith in Christ, mm. to be a Christian today. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Man of God, as you were speaking, I saw that you kind of touched on God's <laughs> ultimate plan and will for man. Would you would you want to just put everything together? What, what do yes, you think so, God's yeah, the ultimate uh, plan for man and, and will for man is? Yeah, in, in, and we've been talking a little Yeah, yeah, we've talked a little bit about all of it because we started a session talking about worship and its relationship with music. I'll summarize it, and Ecclesiastes yeah. says it. What's the whole duty of humanity? Worship. Mm. Worship. But there are things that have put us out of right relationship with God and affect our mm. ability to worship. And, 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 and what Jesus has done is to restore us to a place where we can actually worship. And mm. what will happen is that when the plan that God has inaugurated in the person of Jesus comes to its mm. full fruition and we see the new heavens and the new earth and all of that, what will happen is creation will worship God again. Humanity mm. will worship God again. We, we will become mm. a people of genuine worship. Worship mm. has an object and that object is God himself. And I, I think that what our role is today is to begin to think about how we can help in God's ultimate dream of receiving mm. worship from all the nations of the world. Mm. And what will happen is that um, as Christians, there's a lot of promise attached to the gospel, the message of the gospel. It's like God calling Abraham and saying, come out of your father's house and I'll send you to a land which I have shown you. We've come out, like the Israelites came out of Egypt from slavery, spiritual slavery, mm. but we're on our way to the promised land. In some mm -hmm. ways, we are, we are in the promised land, but we are actually not. Because the promised land is a promise. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's futuristic. And God is about to do um, some work on the earth that when the ear hears it, they're going to say, this is not true. He's about to bring to culmination his plan, you know, that Jesus brought about. And glory. You can also describe it as glory. Because what's going to happen is that his glory will actually be uh, around the earth as the waters cover the, the seas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's in some. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, um, we're almost um, coming to the end of this first session, and then we move. Oh, I'm enjoying it about about the song. Yes, but man, of God, yeah. I want you to share something about the grace of God. What it mm. means and how the grace of God can help believers to navigate life. Mm. Can you touch a little bit? I've seen a lot of people joining the live. God bless you all for tuning in. Thank you so much. I see Sana, I see Jebby, I see Robin. That's the wife of uh, Pastor Jervis. I see <laughs> awesome. uh, Natasha Jokoto. Um, I see Sedi. Um, you're all welcome uh, to Lyric and Song. And my guest for tonight is uh, Pastor and Minister Jervis Jokoto, all the way from Canada. And he's the teaching grace. <laughs> This live, you have to go and watch it again because it's so packed. I, I don't know if you could receive everything as it was coming, but um, I'll save it and post it also on YouTube. It will be available on YouTube so that you can go back to it and just make some notes. You can't just be watching it without making notes. It's impossible. Mm. So um, I thank God for how far we've come in this session. And it's been amazing so far. So um, stay tuned and there's a lot more interesting things coming up. In the next few minutes so don't go anywhere invite your friends share the life and let people come on god bless you yes man of god the grace of god yeah like we've ah, mr eric all. all the way from netherlands i see you <laughs> god bless you mr eric thank you for, for joining me 
All right, yeah. sir. Yeah, like we've touched on a few aspects of the grace of God. Faith. The provision of faith to be saved is grace. Charis, God's gift to us. Uh, there's a lot we could say about what the grace of God is, and I don't want to probably go because the, there's something that happens to us when we receive the grace of God. It, it, it actually changes the way we see even our possessions. So Paul, mm. Paul talks about wow. the grace of the Macedonian church, that even in their need, they gave liberally. In their need, they gave. So that's grace. Mm. When you receive the mm. gift of God From to a an deep place. Yes, when you receive the it, gift, mm. you want to say Man something? Of God. That's yes. not mean we've not really understood grace. Because it's broad. Is... It's very broad. Because grace, like I said, the provision for us to be saved by faith, which is very common right now. We know that's grace, right? The provision, mm. think about it. God decided that, you know, by faith, I'll save you. You are, you are righteous. <laughs> that's, that's grace. That's a gift. And we talked about all the sacrifices of the Old Testament, the five sacrifices plus all the other things you needed to do in order to approach the presence of God. Jesus says that I'm going to take that upon me. I am the sin offering of all of that. And now by faith, we have access. So that's, that's in itself is grace. All of that is grace. Right. But when grace begins to increase in a man's life, mm. I give you one expression of it. You begin to see your possessions differently. Because the part, in, Paul talks about the Macedonian church. Wow. He says, I, I wish you to, to look at the grace of God that was given unto the, the churches of Macedonia. How that in their great need and their great suffering, they gave, they gave. They were generosity, they, generosity. Grace makes somebody generous. <laughs> wow. That's the grace of God. It makes wow. somebody generous. Because you can't see God's grace and his unconditional love, which is also in the song. Unconditional love is one of the phrases. You can't, <laughs> you can't see it. You can't see it and not be changed. It will do something, okay. it will do something to your heart. On the inside on the inside and it makes you a more generous person look at people who actually have the because charis grace charismata the gifts and grace look at people who actually walk in very in unique gifts of the spirit they're generous now mm. i i have to i have to because not everybody would embody that dimension of grace even with the gifts of the spirit of god Right. Um, so the, the expression of the gift is also it is grace. It's God's grace that allows wow. us to, to... It's like it's almost like a donation from God to be able mm. to do what only He is supposed to do, like healing. Mm. So that's, that's a gift. That's grace. The gift of the Spirit. Mm. Teaching. Teaching, for example. God knows that we are limited humanly mm. in being able to put our thoughts together so it matches with His plans and we present it to people in a way that they can be you know, blessed and benefited from. So he gives us a gift called teaching as part of the, the gift of the Spirit. That's wow. all expressions of God's grace. For mm. us to be, the Bible says that... It, to equip us. Yes. It, it's, it's doing something fundamental to our nature. We are participating in God. But you see, God mm. is generous. I like grace because it's, it, it's like you are embodying the generosity of God. Mm. You are seeing it mm. and you are embodying it. You are seeing it and you are embodying it. You are seeing it and you are embodying it. Mm. Um, and I think that, you see, when we start with our grace in mind, there's room for boasting. Mm. Right. Grace is always opposed to boasting in Paul's theology. He's saying that, you know, you can't be boasting mm. because it's all about, about grace. And, and mm. humility, it, it makes you more humble, dependent on God, because God gives grace to the humble. And he resists mm. the proud. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing truth. Interesting perspective. I've never thought about it this way. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Oh, God. Another interesting thing I want us to touch on briefly okay. is the righteousness of God. Yeah. <laughs> what is the righteousness of God and what does it mean to the believer? Then we'll also look at if there's any difference between righteousness and holiness at all. And how does it apply to us? Okay, that's From a lot. the perspective lot. of God, yeah, yes. just in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And I know you're saying it because of the part of the song that says, Jehovah Tikenu. Yes. Jehovah my, Tikenu, my, my, my righteousness. Yes, my righteousness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. And I've touched, I've touched on it already. See, our conversation has been 
very organic, but I see God's hand in it because yeah, I can tell. Yeah, in, in a way, yes. I can tell yes. that the themes are the same. Righteousness is first God. God is righteous, mm. and it, it it you can see His righteousness in the way He acts, His ways, the way He does things. Okay, w one way to understand righteousness is justice in judgment. Okay. If you want to look at it literally, like justice in judgment. Think about um, balance. A balance. We don't have a too many. We don't have too many balances today. But think of a balance. You know, law. They have this mm -hmm. icon. Balance. Yeah, the balance. An unjust mm -hmm. balance is something like this, right? This is heavier mm -hmm. than that. Yeah. This means righteousness. <laughs> justice in Equal judgment. Equal balance. Yes. And what would happen in those days is. Some people will temper with their balances or their measures. They used to call them measures. And so when you put your good here, it will indicate lesser than it should indicate on the measuring, you know, to yeah, device. whatever device. And you probably have to give, he, he has to pay you lesser money. He's tempered with the measuring thing. That's unrighteous. Mm. So, so you're beginning to think about Old Testament images of what righteousness is. And first of all, you know that God is just. God doesn't like this game. He doesn't like it when uh, a rich person is oppressing as, you know, somebody who is poor. He hates it when somebody who has mm. power is using his power to make people feel, you know, unworthy. Yeah. So all those things are part of God's righteousness. That's why he commands us to take care of the poor. It's, it's his nature. That's why his, his ruling scepter in the kingdom is righteousness. Which is why justice, you know, justice and righteousness, are, they are the same root. Justice is a very important thing for God. He hates oppression. It's like, you powerful person, you're trying to push down this guy. That's unjust. That's why God he loves is... the orphans and the widows. Yes, because, you see, God's eye is on this part of the scale. He wants to bring them up. He lifts up those in the dust and those in the dung. He brings them up. So if he sees the scales are too much like this, I think pastors and leaders need to learn that. If mm. you try to make this the, the case all the time, the God will do this himself. He wants things to be balanced. That's the righteousness of God. Wow. He wants, yes, justice in judgment. He wants your judgment to be just. So you don't judge, for example, if somebody walks into your church, and you see that in the New Testament as well, if somebody walks into your church with beautiful clothes, and you give them the best seat. You give them the best seat. Father, help us. Ah, no mm. And somebody comes in with, you know, noble clothes, very basic. And you're like, you know, you can sit at the back there. You've, you've touched something about the nature of God. And we all have to be aware that because God is just, judgment is coming. Mm. Sin uh, has mm. been dealt with in the person of Jesus. That's no mm. question, right? Nobody's going to be judged at the end time because of sin per se, because it's been dealt with in the person of Jesus. If you're going to be judged because of sin, it's because you didn't receive his remedy for your sin, which is Jesus. Mm. But Thank everybody you. will give account for everything they did. And for those rich folks, powerful, authoritative leaders who are oppressing people, you are in big trouble when you come to the judgment throne. Mercy will rejoice over judgment. And you see, I understand that people think of God's love as opposed to justice. It's not true. You know, I, I read some, from an Old Testament scholar one time who said that there's the lopsidedness of God. God is lopsided. And the reason is this. <laughs> the, what you just quoted. What did you say? Mercy will rejoice over judgment. There are places in the Old Testament where you can see that God is actually leaning towards mercy all the time, even when judgment is right before him that he should judge. Yes. So they call it the lopsidedness of God. It's, it's almost like an ironic statement because he's just, mm. but he's lopsided towards mercy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. His lopsidedness. He's skewed towards, he's skewed towards mercy. But, yes. <laughs> he wants to have mercy on us. That's the mm. God we serve. He wants to have My mercy goodness. on us. But Even he knows that judgment. all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you know, the wage of sin is death. 
he, he knows that he, he has to judge death. Then he says, you know what? I can't overcome this law. It's a spiritual law. I'm coming myself to die. You see how mercy is triumphing over that? I'm coming. Mm. Hey. I'm coming myself. Yeah. I'm coming myself to deal with this. And then he's dealt with it and he, sat, ah, he sits yeah, back. So okay. And he's watching us. And he's like, guys, I've done it. And then still, people are like, we don't want your remedy. We don't, we what's can't that? Receive it. We, we can't, can't receive, receive it. We can't receive it. My goodness. The, the cross is foolishness to them that seek wisdom. My soul telling we want something that is profound. You know, it's mm. like some, somebody died for me. What's that? Like, what do you mean died for me? Mm. Like, I can't what? accept it. And blood and the image of, you know, somebody actually being tormented like Jesus was. Look, let that not push you away from receiving the gospel. The torment wow. of the Son of God should have been your torment. You may not believe it right now because grace has made all kinds of things possible. Mm, mm, and you live in an age where, you know, the gods are available, put it that way. And people are into all kinds of spiritual stuff. And you see, the way that God has made for us to come to him is through a person. and His name is Jesus Christ. Mm, and when you mm. receive it, you gain access into that place. Right. Mm. God originally intended for us and we've missed the mark. And he looks at all of humanity and many of them are still saying that we don't want your remedy. I don't want it. Mm, mercy, Lord. But, but you see, in the end, he has to judge us because he's just. So if mm. you're listening to this and you don't, you've not received Jesus, you don't care about Jesus, uh, you think that the name of Jesus is, uh, is just something that was made up. Look at, your, look, look at your date. 2020 is 2020 in the year of our Lord. Our, our calendars are showing us that history is marked by the, the life and ministry of Jesus. I want, I want, I, I really want people to embrace what Jesus has done for us. I think that, which, which is why our music must be part of the vehicles to cause people to worship God. Like yeah. God wants to be worshiped the right way. And it was, it's a miss, mm. you know, there's a lot of themes coming to my mind, but I'll pause here because mm. the problem of our world right now is a lack of worship. And I've talked about that a little bit. And one yeah. of the things we think about is, you know, Adam's sin is the origin of sin. Yes, theologically, yeah, we can say that, you know, even how his sin is translated to us is a lot of theological debate. Some are saying it's genetic. Others are saying it's different. St. Augustine is the one who proposed the genetic thing. But there's a lot of theologians who see the relationship between Adam's sin and our sin in Romans 5. And I like Romans a lot because of that. Um, mm. To be something more than... It's, he. he he opened the door for death to come. Mm -hmm. And that made us unable to serve God. It was as though the devil, let's say death, because death is personified. It's as though death was right. waiting at the door. And Adam opened the door. Just and death, yes, and death came, which is why Romans 5.12 talks about that. As by one man, death came into the world. And mm. you know, all have sinned. So people are like, what's the connection between that hey. act and uh -huh. all have sinned? Um, a lot has happened in our world, but God has made a way. Even if you don't believe it, that we are missing something fundamental. We don't know what it means to be really human. We don't know what it means to, to live in this world that our God has created. We don't know. And those who don't worship God, Paul talks of them and says that, for that which should be known of God is plain to them because God has showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the text of Jeremy, even his eternal power and Godhead. Therefore, they are without excuse. Every person is without excuse because creation is testifying that there is a God that needs to be worshipped. Wow. Oh. My God, as you were speaking, I felt a strong conviction in my heart mm. for us to ask God for forgiveness for mm. injustice. Wow. And taking advantage of people. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a I, noble, I, let's just do that. Yeah. People of God, wherever you're watching us from, just take a moment and just uh, tell the Lord to forgive you if you've ever looked down on anyone, if you've mm. ever taken advantage of anyone in any way. Mm. The judgment of God is coming. But we, we want to ask God to forgive us right now, wherever you are watching. Just ask God, mm. Father, forgive me if at any Father, forgive us. point in time of my life I have looked down on someone, I've taken someone for granted. Yeah. You've deliberately ignored someone. Yeah. You've been mm. injustice. Mm. 
This has to go for the story like that. Yeah. Father, help us to see. Father, help us to see your face in the poor. Amen. Amen. Hmm. We love you, Father. Help us. Help us. Yes, Lord. In any ways that we've been unjust, give us courage to reconcile, offer retribution for the people we have wronged. Thank you. If you just joined, we're just asking God to forgive us if we've wronged anyone in any way, and we've we've looked down on people, and we've, mm. we've, we've been unjust to people. Yeah, we've taken advantage of people in any way. You just want to ask God to forgive you. We have one more minute to do this. And yeah, we we'll move on with the session. Thank you, Jesus. We ask for 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 your for, for forgiveness, Lord. I, yeah, I just if there's anything that I've done. Because it has honored the humanity of another person and made them feel less human. I'm sorry. Father, I love you. Help me love others the way you do. Help me show your unconditional love to other people. I love you, Father. I honor you. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. You're so loving. I feel the love of yes. God all over this place. The mercy of God. Yes. Yes. It's incredible. If you're here, if you're here on this platform and you're not born again, you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. After the session, hmm. you can DM um, Pastor Jervis. Yeah. And. Uh, or before oh, the end of this, we'll just say a short sinner's prayer. Uh, Pastor Jeff yes. will just lead us to just say a yes. short sinner's prayer. And welcome us into the household of faith. Amen. Um, God is good. Yes. Um, man, well, the, the, the last thing that I want you to touch on mm -hmm. before we move into the next phase, which will take about 20 minutes and then we're out of here, is... Okay. Um, could you please say something briefly about the power of the spirit and what this power can, can do? <laughs> wow. Yeah, like, that's, uh, you're talking about the power of God himself because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. It's mm -hmm. God's own life source. Think about the mm -hmm. thing that makes God God, the spirit. He is the finger of God, is the power of God. He's the hand of God, is the, God's ability to arrange things. He, he is the mind of God. He, like, everything that God is, anything that, anything that God embodies is the spirit of God. It's what makes him God. And think about mm. the fact that God has given him as a gift to us. I, I don't know if we can appreciate what a gift it is to have the Holy Spirit. It's God mm. giving of, of himself to us. It's a, it's one, I think it's the ultimate gift. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate gift. And mm -hmm. you see, he comes with power because God is all powerful. He comes with power. Mm -hmm. And that power is expressed in specific ways, and which is what Paul was trying to gather from what he was experiencing. You need to understand that Paul's theology, a lot of it was born in mission, as he was on mission. He, right. was, seeing God, he was seeing God move and, in the churches and as he traveled and, and he began to write. Because he was experiencing the what work of the Spirit. Words. Yes, and he was writing about it. So he talked about, you know, what is the gift of the word of knowledge? A gift of, he was talking about things he's seen, ex expressed. But I know many of us think that that was an exhaustive, exhaustive list of the, the gift of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, but my, my senior pastor in my church wrote a book, uh, and he was also, you know, lining up with some of the writers that have written before him that the gifts are not nine or eight like many of us think there are about 21 about because we don't even know there are about 21 mm. and there's a lot of you know expressions of the power of the spirit in our lives 
uh, that many of us may not even be aware of. One thing about the work of the power of the Spirit is that sometimes it may seem too uh, natural to you. And I will use the word natural loosely because it's supernatural. But when he's working, right. it, may, it may seem too natural that you may uh, overlook. You may, not, you may not realize it. Mm. When a gift is working in a person's life, it actually flows from who you are because the Spirit of God is now part of us. He has been given to us as a gift. And then he expresses <clears throat> himself. Sometimes you don't even realize it, that the Holy Spirit mm. is working. But he is working. The power of God is not always spectacular. That's what I want us to know. It may work mm. in ways that may not look that spectacular, but he's working. Um, yeah, and power, let's, let's, let's narrow it down to music, for example. Mm. Um, I'm a strong believer that the power of the Spirit can work sometimes most effectively through music than it does in maybe a sermon. And I use that term loosely because I'm a musician, I'm biased a bit. But I believe, even from reading That's scripture true. and my own experience, that the power of God can work in music uh, in some really yeah, amazing ways. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you one example. I can give you several. I'll give mm. you one. Long ago, we went on a mission trip to northern Ghana. And I've shared this a few times. But it still amazes me to talk about it. Like, mm. we went to this mission. Um, it's still like, it always makes me think about God. Like, I, what a privilege we all have to, you know, be a part of what he's doing. Um, and we can't lose the joy of what it means to be in Christian ministry. And I think Paul was aware of that. And when he was writing and talking about the things that God was doing, He's aware that he wants people to arise to the reality that we've been given such a noble quest. We can't undermine it. Some people are thinking, should I serve God or should I not serve God? Mm. Paul is like, I don't know if that's even a question. There's no credible alternative to living completely under God, giving your hands and your life completely to him. But that's a, a different thing. But I want to remember those stories. It reminds me of the privilege we have to serve him. And we mm. went on this mission and it was like, um, to this village, they've never received a gospel. But like they've never, they are an unreached people group. They don't know God. They don't know Jesus, they worship uh, other idols, like tangible. This is the real right. idol worship, tangible stuff. Mm. And we, we spent all night praying, asking God for direction, what to do. What do we do in this neighborhood, this community that you sent us to? We, have, we had about four days in that particular village. Mm. Uh, and, right. and, and, and we knew that God wanted to do something there. Like, why are we here? Like, so we spent the night because we didn't have time to waste. We wanted to know God's mind about what to do mm. in this space. Um, and um, so I'm getting to a, a point which will help you make sense of what I'm saying about music and the power of God. Right. But he told us in that prayer time, it was, a, it was an all night prayer time. And he said, take your guitar. At that time I had my guitar there. Take your guitar and go and sing around the chief's hut. Go and sing around the chief's hut. And we did not even know who the chief was. So here's another mm. important. We didn't know who the chief was, but that's what the Holy Spirit said to us take your guitar and go and sing around the chiefs. And um, he led us there. <laughs> he led wow. us there. That's, that's another miracle. And guess what? It's like 2 a.m. So pitch black. He led us there. Mm. We walked out my, with my guitar singing. There's a song I wrote long ago. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge me. He will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and yeah, 6. Yeah, I love that song so much. <laughs> and then we were singing that song. We were all going. <laughs> And we felt the Holy Spirit. It was like he was navigating us. We just kept going. We got to this space. There was this hut there. Then we just started going around. We all had a witness that this is the chief's house. And I just kept singing the song. I don't remember, like six, mm. seven times around. And that was it. We came back. How he led us back to our hut. Another miracle. But we got there and just praised him till the next morning. And uh, in the morning, we see that if some folks are coming towards our hut. And it looked like there was a, it was a big deal because it was like somebody who had like this mm. thing on his hand, like a, an umbrella, you know, in the traditional village system in Ghana, the traditional. So anyway, the mm. chief was coming to our house. Uh, long and short of it, the song had an impact on him. And because of what he experienced that night, he told us in our heart, it was like, I want to know about your God. Now, you need to mm. understand this. this. This guy does not understand English. So we had a translator standing there. But the song wow. was in English. <laughs> the song was in English. So the guy was impacted by the, the song. And he knew that there was some, there's a God attached to it. He, they worship gods in that, in that village. So it was like, what God do you guys, you know, 
I share the gospel. That's how God opened the door for the gospel for the entire village. Because the next wow. day, we had a, an, an evangelistic campaign, which the whole village came because the chief called it. <laughs> and we spoke the gospel. That's how an entire community was given to the Lord. Music. Wow. Wow. Music. So expressive of the power of God. Yeah, it did something to the man. And I, it's mm. sometimes difficult to understand how that works. But that's just a small wow. glimpse of the power of God. I think God's going to do more than that in the coming days in the church. Amen. I agree. Yeah. Wow. Jebby says, I love that song so much. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. So, man, bro, thank you so much for these expositions. Like, deep stuff. You're welcome. Like, really, really, really amazing stuff. I've learned so much. Thanks. I've learned so much. And people of God, I'll be saving this life. It'll be available on my channel. It'll also be available on YouTube. And so uh, after I'll share the links and then you can have a recap and yeah. a review, but just go over and listen again. Yeah, it's pretty a long session, but I'm sure you'll be blessed so much. Um, we're moving into the next phase of this session and that's going to take about 15 minutes and we'll be out of the way. Um, we're going to just talk briefly about the song. Yeah. I need you. And so, Mark, go ahead. Um, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, um, so the song you wrote is I Need You. Did you write it yourself? Uh, uh, or some, someone wrote it and you sang? What? what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. And, like, and, 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 yeah. So sure. you can just tell us briefly. No, about... like as, as any musician knows, like, or songwriter is like, there are different pieces to, you know, what brings a song together. And I, I think that it started coming to me you know, months before, you know, I actually recorded it. And one piece, one part of the whole song will come to me first. And that part, the part that came to me first. So if you've heard the song, let me, actually, let me play. I don't know if you would hear, but I'm going to play the part that came to me first. Sure. Um, oh, how I long to know that part. That, that was the first part I wrote. So... That was it. Oh, oh, how I long to know. Amazing grace. In wow. I face. Sure condition. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So this one, actually, I got it wow. when I was... Um, on my on a mission trip to India, so this is when I wow. got that song, and this song kept ringing in my heart because we went through a lot of stuff. Anybody who has gone on a, uh, a mission trip, you know, Kolkata, which is like, you know, the heart of India. There's a lot of stuff that is happening there. Like that's where we have literal idol worship. People are actually worshiping idol visibly, like we talked about it earlier on. This is like the real literal mm -hmm. sense of idol worship. And then we were in an environment where a lot of things had happened to our team. And so this song was a reminder that I'm leaning on his grace. It's not, I was leading the team, but I knew that I couldn't lead a team into such a territory on my own strength. And I was like, oh, how I long to know your all amazing grace. <laughs> and you know what? Some of our team members couldn't make it. At the airport, they had visa issues. Think about what it would have done to the team the dynamic. We had planned our sessions. We were going yeah. to work with women who had been rescued from human trafficking. And we were doing an entire retreat for them. Uh, blessing the ministry there that was working with them locally. We were just there to help the process. They are the leaders there. Um, but everybody had a role. There was one of the ladies who was in charge of looking after the, the kids. Uh, we're doing something with the kids of the prostitutes in that area where they had established this beautiful home restoration for them and uh, she couldn't make it so think about it i was feeling as a leader i was like lord what are we going to do the burden so so in all the misery we face you are unconditional <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> and um god worked marvelously in that trip it was great it was amazing so wow. pieces started coming together and obviously during this COVID season a lot has happened. 
I've, I've personally been impacted by it. A lot of people have been impacted by it. And I began to, you know what I said? If one thing, if there's one thing COVID has taught us is to be how to, is how to think about, like, how do we do things differently? Churches are trying to rethink how to do services. Everybody's like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to approach this song differently. I'm just going to plug it in. And my daughter was here in my makeshift studio, home office, whatever. And she just sat on the chair and I just took the guitar, pushed record and played through the song once, the whole thing. And she was sitting down looking at my face. She actually was hearing me playing it earlier because I had got the part about, um, so this part came later on, the, the main chord. Like, I need you, Jesus. That part, it came, it, came, it came later on. Wow. And so she loved it. Anytime I play it, that she, she would love it. <laughs> and she'll be, and so she knew the song and I was, I'd, before I recorded, I was playing through it one time and she came, she was dancing and she sat down and I said, Eva, I'm about to record. So I, I looked at her face and I played the whole song looking at her and I would play through mm. it one time with no particular structure in my mind. I just said, I'm just going to do some guitar stuff and I do it. And then that's how it, it came together. So wow. yeah, it wasn't too structured. I tr decided not to make it scripted. I just said, I'll play. My daughter's sitting there and we're just going to make this happen right now. <laughs> wow. 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 Amazing. Such a beautiful song. But you said, I need you, G. Can you talk about <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the other thing about this song. I, like I said, I wanted to be unscripted, not too sophisticated, not too. And I wanted to be a genuine expression of my heart to God. So right. the G was, was what I said when I was initially singing. I was like, I need you, G. And G is God. And also, it sounds like the first letter of G, like G for Jesus, right? So it's both God and Jesus right. at the same time. So I, you know, I decided to keep it in the lyrics. I was like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing I Need You, G. Because it's like mm. personal. It's very personal and intimate. Right. I mean, um, yeah, like informal. Like God wants to be our friend, kind of. <laughs> mm. I can call him mm. like he's, he's my G. Like, I mm. need you, G. He calls us friends. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And brethren. Anyway. Um, man of God, quickly. Um. We'll just take a few portions of the song. I mean, we've already gone deep, deep, deep yeah. into the lyrical content of the song. But these were some phrases that caught, caught, caught my attention. Um, um, what does it mean when, when you say God is unconditional? Briefly, just briefly. Yeah, and I touched a bit about it. Like, I think in our society where when you do something wrong, somebody can hold it against you for a long time and you need restitution, reconciliation, all kinds of things. And people still don't forget things people have done against them. It's difficult for us to know that there is a God whose love is unconditional. It's mm, not really... Nature. Mm. Yes, it's difficult because it's like you haven't seen many people who are like that, <laughs> to be honest, where our love is unconditional. It's very hard, right? Mm, like very anybody hard. in pastoral ministry knows that. That is hard to be... Because to, to, you know that God has called you primarily to love, love, love the people you're serving, to help them grow. You see, and you need to ask God to give you love for them all the time. Sometimes my birthday, that's all I do. Ask God, give me love for the people I serve. That's the mm. birthday gift I'm asking for. Birthday, birthday gift. Because I know it for us as humans, it's difficult. If somebody says something against you, somebody says something bad against you, it's difficult for you to have the same kind of affection for them. Right? Yeah. And, and so I think that the unconditional love of God is really a powerful image of um, the posture that God has right now post Christ's work on the cross mm -hmm. in inviting us even in our mess to still come back. Mm. Wow. 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 Invite, inviting us even in our mess to still come back. Um, the next one is, what is the essence of growing in the knowledge of God? Because I saw that you said a lot of times that God should like more, wanting to know more of God. And that, mm -hmm. that, that theme has been, you've been singing that song since I've known you, wanted oh, to wow. know more of God. Yes, every mm. time was, you, you say that a lot, oh. like, to know more oh. of God. So I just want you to speak yeah. briefly about what it means, the essence of growing in the knowledge of God. 
Why is it I so think important? in a Jewish context, knowledge is not just head. For Jew, a Jew, knowledge is experience. Mm. So biblically, we are saying, I want to experience you. Can, can you please repeat that again? In, in, in a Jewish worldview, knowledge mm. is not just head knowledge. It's experience. Mm. It's a thorough mm. participation in the object of your knowledge. A mm. thorough participation in the object of your knowledge. So mm. to know somebody, and then you see that, you know, come up a few times when it's like, an, you know, Enoch knew his wife and gave birth to, like, he was talking about marital relationship, knowing. Mm. I think that if there's one thing in my heart, I want to know God. And it's, I don't want it to just be head knowledge. I don't also want it to be blind. <laughs> right. I, I want it to be knowledge that is grasped um, and is real. But I also mm. want it to be relational knowledge that is intimate and experiential that I experience God in my life every time, everywhere, mm. in everything. Mm. I invite him into everything. My money, my relationship with my daughter, my wife, my, mm. like, my friendships. I talk to him about all of that. I said, Lord, help me to be a better friend. I'm quiet. I like to be on my own. Help me to be mm. a better friend. Help mm. me to be a better husband. My mm. mind, I think about a lot of things. I want to be present mm. with my family so that I'm not too mm. disconnected from them. Help me. Mm. I want, see, our relationship with God shouldn't be too rigid <laughs> mm. and too limited to like, uh, you know, a special service in church or something. Yeah. Right. Wow, amazing. The last thing is, in your song, you mentioned about the truth of God. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> the truth of God. Only you can give me truth again. Yeah. So only you can give me truth again. Yeah. I only mean, you can give me. I, I saw somewhere in John where it says that uh, we, we behold the, 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 the glory of the only begotten of the oh. Father, full of grace and truth. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I want you to talk about what, what truth we're talking about. In simple terms, something that is not a lie. <laughs> I think that you can believe a lie. And that's one of the ways the devil puts people in bondage mentally. Yeah, it becomes a stronghold because you've built upon a lie and now you have a fortress in your mind. Mm. Which is why Paul says that the weapons of our warfare are not I'm carnal, not but, but they are mighty through God, God in pulling down pulling those down strongholds. You can believe a lie. So, I mean, there's a lot we can say about truth, biblical truth being embodied in Jesus and all of that, but I simply put, it's the opposite of a lie. And the devil is a father of lies. And mm. he's throwing lies at us all the time. Lies about mm. our self-worth, lies about, you know, you getting discouraged because you're hearing things you shouldn't hear. He's the only one who can give you truth about yourself. I've gone wow. through times where people tell me things and I wonder, can I actually be a good pastor again? I want to, mm. and, I, and I go back to God. I said, only you can give me truth mm. again. Like, tell me, <laughs> uh, wow. tell me about me <laughs> from your <Yeah>. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a good prayer for everyone watching us right now. God, tell yeah. me about me. Because sometimes you think you know yourself better than God. That's no. A lie. no, no, no. He knows you better. Wow. He knows you better. Yeah. Well, but just quickly, why do we like to hide our identity? Like, why do we like to behave like we are deceiving God when we come into His presence? I think we, we all sometimes, yeah. Go ahead. Sometimes we we want to we come to Him as though He doesn't know us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if if it's familiar, but I, I think to say something about you, you know you know when Jesus says that let them come unto me the children for such are they in the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. I think mm. part of what Jesus was saying was this. Children don't know how to manage their face and their emotion. They don't mask their emotions. They don't put on a false identity. If they don't like you, they will run away. If they see you and they, they think they want to say something, they'll say, it's not just being, you know, without boundaries. But kids, there's this innocence. When we're growing up, we've learned how to manage our emotions, manage the way we look. Hypocrisy. I'm talking about hypocrisy. Actually, biblical hypocrisy mm. literally means wearing mm. a mask. Let's go. There, Let's there's, go. The real, there's the real stuff behind, but you're wearing a mask because people are watching. Mm. Yeah. So to, be, to unmask 
Also, mm. God needs to help us because many of us are wearing mm. masks. A false mm. self. So mm. when we come before God, we think we can play the same game with Him. Mm. Meanwhile, He, he sees your heart. <laughs> before mm. your words. You see, mm. Jesus said that some people think because of lengthy prayers that God will hear you. He says, when you go, shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. He'll hear you. And it's not about mm. the shouting or the length and... You know, this is why I said that sometimes we have to nurture that friendship, the intimate, like I need you, G, kind of, and mm. knowing God experientially, which is not just head, um, putting away all those masks. Like, it's tough. Mm. We all want to look good. Like, before I came on this, I was like, do I look good? Like, am I okay? <laughs> like, it's natural, right? You want to yeah. you wanna have a certain kind of image. But if you make that go too far, which a lot of us do, it's a problem because God can see your heart and you are, you know, you're trying to mask it. Mm. Just be unmasked. And sometimes if you are a stage person, preacher, artist, whatever, you do things for people to watch, almost performing, there's a temptation for you, for you to also put on those masks because it's a performance, right? Mm. I want to challenge musicians to take away the masks when you're standing on stage. I remember... Mm. I remember when I was about to start like public ministry because I would play in my room and talk to God alone and I was nervous. I was mm. nervous. Like, because sometimes I'm wondering, am I playing the right thing? Am I singing the right thing? Am I in tune? Am I looking good? <laughs> See, some of the, <laughs> the thoughts that are in your mind, right? And... Makes you nervous. I, and I asked God, I said, I don't want that anymore. So I spent time praying and I said, God... May I see you as my only audience when I stand before people? May I unmask myself? And you know, I needed God to teach me that what I have to offer, he has empowered me to offer it. So that I don't want to have to Amen. depend on how people's faces are looking. Yeah. Because sometimes even the faces can dis disorient you. You're, you're playing something you think is amazing. And then somebody's like, you know, and you're thinking, oh, did I just... All those things can disorient you. It can make you put a false self trying to mm. be something that you think people want to see. But you hear something. Wow. You impact people more when you're yourself than when you're mm. your full self. Yeah. Mm. People are more blessed mm. to see you as mm. you are. Actually, mm. pastors don't know the power of vulnerability, but it's demonstrated mm. in the act of Jesus on the cross. That's true. <laughs> My good. When yes. you are vulnerable, you are actually releasing power. It's the hidden wisdom of the cross. <laughs> We saw in Jesus in many ways, like washing people's feet. I mean, yes. what kind of vulnerability is this? Yes. Man of God, I'm just convicted right now. I want us to mm. quickly pray. I put mm. a prayer topic down there. We're going to pray right now. You don't have to be a worship leader. Again, this mm. is a general prayer for, for every believer on this platform. We do, we're going to pray that the Lord should take away every form of false self also mm. and for god to help us to unmask yes and yes when we come into his presence yes we should just come as we are yes and that's well, the only way we can receive possible. true transformation and and, yeah. and and change so wherever you are right now just join us right now yes Open lord. your mouth right now Call the 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 ask the lord ask the lord yes, right now in the next Father, two minutes, just speak to God wherever you are. Tell Father, him, take away Father, the masks. I really want you to take away the masks, please. So I can Father, be God. the person you've called me to be. I can stand. I can stand before you. Take away the mask. Tell him, unmask me, Lord, in your presence. May I come to you as I am. Help us, Take away every falsehood, any form of hypocrisy. Lord, deal with us. Work on us. Work on us. Work on our minds, our conscience. Work on our hearts. Help us, Lord. Help us. Working us. The working. The Lord is working in people's hearts. Yeah. Somebody watching this, God is working in your life. Because I saw it, I felt it before I came on the call. The God's going to do something mm. in people's lives. Wow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Kali, Mosan, may we come to you boldly, boldly. May we come to you boldly. Yeah. 
and open up to you. May we be honorable for Lohuma Hal Kambo Silla Tuvini Mamo. Thank you, Jesus. Take away self. Take away self. Take away self. Self worship. May we take on your nature, Lord. Yeah. Work on our hearts, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Break the fallow grounds of our hearts. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Replace our hearts of stone, the heart of flesh. Yeah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. well, Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Man of God, um, would you want to quickly acknowledge the team that worked on this song? Some of them are uh, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jerby. Please give shout outs. <laughs> Jerby is on the live uh, stream right now. He played the synth. If you hear, there's this synth that's really powerful in the song. And it's kind of, you know. Amazing. It's playing some of the melodies, trying to follow me. And just, you know, how Jerby is so blessed that way. So he, he obviously played all the pads. So the song is mostly guitar and synth with some percussion right. and stuff. Um, so how do you hear work? something like do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't know. Like, this is crazy. I'm like, what's this, Jemmy? What, what is clay pot you use for that? It's called a clay pot. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> is, that, is that the same thing? Or say, or say, or say the drama. So he has mm -hmm. something like like a pot. I don't know. When he hits the top it looks of it, like a hit, like Yeah, do, do, do. but yeah i i use samples obviously i don't have a clay pot here <laughs> right okay have, yeah, okay, okay okay but this um size. yes but it's it's, uh, it's amazing good, eh? it sounds yeah. so good yeah yeah like um so jerby how we usually work is i send him my basic production i call it basic because i know he's a better producer than i am and i just right. do the basic you know put the lines there and I send it to him initially, and then he would give me comments. And I, I'll usually tell him that this is what we are going for. And so this song, I said, I want it to be very raw and not too sophisticated and stuff. So he, he got the picture. And then we were even debating whether he should add piano. He should add, you know, and we were like, you know what, let's keep it. So he's like, I'm going to play some pads. And, and then, yeah, so he's, he plays it over it and sends it back. And, yeah, so that's how it, it, it went. Jerby did that. It was... Yeah, I love, I love what he played. And some people will ask me, I love the synth, I love the synth. That's Jerry playing the synth. Mm, wow. So it's guitar, mostly me. And I played uh, about two tracks of main guitar. So, and I panned them right and left. So you can right. hear one here, one here. So it feels fuller. Yeah. Um, and then there's like a intro thing, which I got. Da -na 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 -da -na -na -da -na that was like a... You know, Right. So that would like be interspersed. So I'll try to, um, as I was playing the first track, I just played through without trying to think about it. And the second track, I tried to play exactly what I played the first time. I put, yeah. you know, I put it together, sent it to Jerby, and then he added all that stuff. And then basically that was it. And we sent it over to Outlook Records, the, uh, Daniel, our friend, to mix. Um, Daniel, that's the he first. Makes the master. So he didn't master. I, I sent it to somebody else to master. And I, I, oh, I think okay. he also does mastering, but yeah. he didn't master. Um, we sent it to somebody else to master. And um, yeah, I've worked with Danny a bit a long time ago. So more of not real, a real project, but just working together around some stuff. Mm -hmm. And I liked, and I was like, you know what, let's try him. I talked with Jeremy, prayed about it and stuff. And then he, I think he did a really good job. And um, the lyric video was done by right. Jeremy's wife, Natasha. Oh, Natasha. Awesome. Yes. So Natasha is, I think she was on the call. I think she's still here. But mm. she, she's obviously very creative. Like um, the way her mind works. She's so blessed. Wow. And, and so I, I, I thank God for Jerby and Natasha because like throughout this whole time, 
he and his wife have been super super Very supportive yeah like mm -hmm. the first song that we released in may his, like natasha did the, the lyric video jerby did the productions elements and stuff um so it's all towards the project the you know the i'm whole again the main album project that we're working on oh wow so this is a single from that um so this one is more stripped down the others have very full horns bass drums we're actually working wow. on a song with two bass guitars so interesting other things but it's very um jerby natasha have been very instrumental in awesome. you know a lot of those aspects of you know the music and stuff that we're working on so i, I really appreciate mm. them thanks jerby amazing god bless you guys god bless you so much the song is a beautiful song Manu, where can we find your song? I need you. That will help okay. us to actually um, appreciate this session. Okay, more. you can go to my Instagram account. Um, what's my Instagram account? Jervis um, underscore Jokuto. Yeah, and then you find it in my bio. There's a link there, but it's also in all the digital distribution stores: iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music. You just type right. "I need you, Jervis," and it will be there. So. Right. You can right. find it in my bio or in all the stores. God bless you. And there's a lyric uh, video on my YouTube. On yeah. YouTube. What's your yes. YouTube handle, please? I think the same, Jervis Jokuto. Yeah. Jervis Jokuto. Yeah. Okay, Manu, but we'll just take about two questions from our listeners and then we'll call <laughs> it a day. We've spent clearly two hours on this live. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> this is the sec second longest live session of I. After Akesi Brimpon, this is the second one. And it's it's so obvious because of what God has been speaking to hmm. you guys. And we are both strong teachers of, of the word. It's amazing. So two questions, two questions. Anything that you've heard that you're not clear about, you can ask a question. Or something not necessarily related to this live. You can also drop in your, your question in the comment section. Yeah. We have a few minutes to be out of here. Everything was self explanatory. Okay. Okay, right. Javi posted the, the link. The link to the song, yeah. Yeah. You can find it. Let me pin it. Okay. Looks like looks like the Holy Spirit gave <laughs> gave understanding. <laughs> so there are no questions so that's that's great that's great that's great if no questions then guys we'll just bring uh oh there's a question if you wanted to tell someone how to discover god what would you say hmm. yeah it's almost a um it's a very loaded question because you're thinking there are aspects of God that we will always, even in all eternity, all eternity, be growing to know. So God is like so vast that our knowledge of him will always be limited. But I think that at the heart of it, God wants us to come with our limited knowledge, come with our limited resources. I tell people, who think that theological ed education is the only way to know how to interpret the Bible. I remember in one of my classes in school, so I've, I've, I've done my MDiv in theology, and I remember sometimes people assume that the only way to know God is through our exegetical methods and all that. And I say to people that, mm -hmm. what about those who never have enough money to go to Bible school? What about those who don't have money to understand all those things that we are learning? Can they not, can they not know about God in the Word? which is why the Holy Spirit is the provision for every Christian to you continue to know. All truth. Yes. And it can, be, it can be divorced from the word, obviously, but 
the Holy Spirit cannot and should not be um, made to be secondary when it comes to how we get to know God and how we grow in our knowledge of God because He's the one who enables us to grasp some of the things that will be difficult for us, humanly speaking, because we are limited in our thinking and all, but the Holy Spirit is yeah. central. And, and so I, I say that, like, that's why there are a lot of Christian movements happening, um, which is like, if you think about the movements of the Spirit um, with churches, like say Brazil and Cuba, and you read about what the Holy Spirit is doing, some of those spaces, and around the world, you can tell that when the Holy Spirit appoints a leader and he begins to work. You see that the beginning, the person is just a lover of God, really, mm. really sincere about their relationship with him. And then over mm. time, they begin to have the theological, uh, you know, stuff to back it. It's, it's like yeah. faith seeking understanding, faith seeking mm. understanding. So I think right. the starting point with God is always faith, love, and when we grow, as we continue to rely on his spirit and steady what the word says about him, to be grounded, that way we keep ourselves grounded. But obviously, Jesus stands tall when it comes to how to know who God is and how he acts. In the person of Jesus, we can know God because how Jesus reacted to things can tell us how God reacts to things because he is God um, in the flesh. So Jesus, like studying the life of Jesus and thinking, okay, what will God do? He's supposed to say, what would Jesus do? What would God do? Look at Jesus. Mm. Wow. God bless you, man. But there's one question that I want us to look at. Um, Eric says, maybe too much now, <laughs> but you talk so much about the power of worship. Now in the crisis, we have the urgent advice not to sing. They just sing from the podium in churches. What is wise to do now? Wow. That's a big, that's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. That 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 we, is a we, really we are, we, pastoral the subject exactly. We are the authority, so <laughs> Bible urges us to obey those in authority. So if it's a law that has been passed by the government or something, then I don't know. But man of God, you can share your view on that. No, I, I like it's a very good pastoral question. Pastoral being that you're thinking about, you know, how do I care for this people and honor what God has called us to do as a church, um, given the limitations that are around? That's a really good question. What do we do about singing? Because there's power in worship. Like I said, all churches right now are trying to think about how do we redo church? I think that out of COVID, there's going to be a new kind of ecclesiology because the church mm -hmm. has survived worse times in history. This looks right. like unprecedented, but in the history of the church, the kind of persecution and turmoil that our movement has experienced. Mm. I can say that this is not the first. Yeah. Um, but somehow we survive because there's something at the core of our faith that is undefeatable, or should I say is actually the presence of the God that we worship himself. He's amongst us and he helps us to navigate new territories when we get there. So in your mm. local church, everybody will have to think about it. To be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, think about how can I, within the given restrictions, you know, do these things. This will not be a satisfactory answer. You are right. This is very big a topic for a short time that we have. But thanks for asking. I think that God will give leaders wisdom on what to do. I mean, sometimes I watch clips, you know, like from a cathedral in England where you have everybody singing. And they have their hymn books. Everybody's singing. And it's not somebody on the stage singing for others to watch or participate. So it's an interesting thing. Sometimes I think about it, even on a broader level about the church and the power of congregational participation in, in worship. And so you, you will feel that that's missing. Like it's missing when you're sitting in, in a COVID you know, situation mm -hmm. where you're restricted and you're wearing masks. And, um, but God is with the church. Mm. he's with us in all of this and I pray that God mm. gives you and your church and the wherever grace. you are yes the grace mm. to think about what to do here's something I want us to remember mm. what well, are you going to say something go ahead yes I was going to say something just to add to what you just said that yeah. the first place that worship comes from is from the heart God accepts worship from the heart before we actually pronounce it out of our lips mm. and mm. I want them to 
Eric here and your team, you should encourage them to sing a lot of melody in their hearts. You know, and God is going to honor, even though it's not going to come out of your mouth, the, the state of your heart and the posture of your heart in mm. his presence. Ask whoever is singing from the podium it matters to God a lot. Because always God is trying to reconcile what I had to say in the days that I lived us. So in mm. Isaiah, he says that you come to me, but your hearts are far away from what you're saying. So God is giving precedence to the posture of our hearts first. So I'll encourage you to rather speak to the people to condition their hearts more and position their hearts more uh, in the presence of God, even though there are restric restrictions to open your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Yeah. Um, I think that's another question. Yes. It says that, how do you address the inability to practice the word rather than just quoting the word in this dispensation of ours? Yeah. The inability to practice. So being hearers of the word or and not being doers. Or just yeah. um, receiving the word with excitement. And <laughs> yeah. And yeah. 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 Um, do you, do you want me to take a shot at it just briefly? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, briefly. I think you've raised a very crucial question because it's not new. Obviously, we know the scripture says that we shouldn't just be hearers of the word. That's more of the hearing side, not quoting, like you're asking. But he, the admonition is for us to be doers. Mm. And I know that depending on the where we come from in terms of our Christian heritage, there are different ways that our denominational expression of Christianity, and I'm aware of that because moving from Ghana to Canada, I see all kinds of different, and then, you know, mission mm -hmm. work, you see different expressions of Christianity. It's the same God, the same orthodox word, but there's just different expressions. And God's, that's God's wisdom. It's not to be undermined. But we need to be aware of the limitations that our current expression of Christianity places on us when it comes to how to actually do the word in its full measure. One of it, mm. and I'll say because that's where I came from and I've seen it, is what we talked about about God's being, God being just and his desire to see the poor downtrodden are raised up. That's mm. the practice of the word. That's the mm. practice of the gospel. The gospel of reconciliation calls us not only to be reconciled to God, but to be reconciled to people, regardless of their race. Mm. To love. Network. Did I cut off? No, I think I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Especially in an age where faith is so much opposed to works. In, our, in, in a certain kind of theology, theology, where faith is so opposed to works that we forget to talk about what works looks like after you have faith. And... Mm -hmm. Those are some of the barriers to having a full understanding of how God calls us to serve him fully, especially if you are locked in a specific kind of um, understanding of Christianity that looks like one particular way. But I, I've, been, I've been blessed to think, you know, read from people who are not just Ghanaian, but are also uh, Christian and, you know, they are from different denominations and Catholic. I've read Catholic, my, my commentary on um, Romans, for example, is from a Catholic scholar. And I love mm. their perspective because we would consider them to be people of works. They have all these rituals and sometimes Protestants who are, you know, taking up the Reformation theology of Luther and thinking faith is opposed to works. Anything that looks like the medieval Catholic church is evil. <laughs> we don't understand what the Catholic church has that we don't have. And I mm. honestly think that part of it, you know, they have the contemplative tradition which is very deep. There's a mystical side of Catholic theology that many of us don't have access to because we have written off the whole thing. Talking mm -hmm. about Protestants, lots of them have written out the whole thing. We miss out on the dimension of God. And I see that we are limited in our ability to practice our faith if we limit mm -hmm. it to the things that we are used to, our narrow understanding of the... Let's ask God to show us what's his bigger picture. And I know mm -hmm. you may be asking a question um, on a more generic sense, but I, 
I can ask, answer from my ex experience and say that um, understanding how God calls us in different ways that my Christian tra tradition did not offer me has helped me to understand different ways to practice the word of God effectively. Um, I'll pause here before I go into many other things, but <laughs> that's, yes, I'll pause here because yeah. I know we've spent a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. just add to what you just said that there's a place of knowledge and there's a place of uh, um, quoting scripture. Yes. Which doesn't replace, obviously, doing the word. So, mm. in as much as we, because knowledge precedes revelation. And sometimes we, 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 we need to also memorize scripture uh, and, and be able to apply it when it comes in handy. So some, it, it, it's, in, it's in the remembrance of scripture that we are able to apply. So mm. we, can't, we can't relegate that also to the background. What we need to pray for is the grace to be doers. Yes. What we know. Because the challenge is actually, sometimes it's not that you don't know what to do. You know, but it's in, in enforcing or applying knowledge. Yes. That is where the challenge is. And so I think one of yes. the ways to also be doers of the word is to pray. Mm. And, and, and when, when we pray, when you have a prayer life, it's easy to apply the word. Mm. Because the Holy Spirit says that you bring to remembrance what Christ has taught. Mm. So one of the key things is to is to allow the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance. And when you're able to remember what you already know, then you can apply. So we, yes. we have to pray that God gives us the grace. Yeah. 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 And I've yeah. my own experience has is like there's a lot of barriers to how we we think God is asking us to apply the word. That's why I started talking about Christian tradition mm, too. Right. Because I've right. seen, I've seen a lot of situations where we don't, we don't even understand what. Now that I know what the word, what I, what, <laughs> yes, because sometimes our teaching doesn't make the connection. Like it's true. Now that you've heard this, it's this different is what from it the means. practical. The practical. So we have left it for people to figure it out, and in mm. the figuring it out, some are sure, yeah, some are not sure. Zero. So I think it's an important thing for us to always remember that That's the true. word of God it calls us into a different way of living. It is why I say that faith must not always be opposed to works in the sense that after you've received, so you don't, can't earn your salvation, but God calls us to live a certain way because eventually he's thinking about his new earth. He doesn't want us to mess it up. Mm -hmm. He's changing us so that we won't mess his new earth. <laughs> and if your actions don't match up with your faith, the faith he profess. Paul says this, some, some of the scriptures, many of us don't want to quote it. He says, no fornicator, no liar, no, no one. No, he mentions a long list will enter into the mm. kingdom, will inherit the kingdom. <laughs> Why? It's a picture of what God is doing. Mm. He wants an earth that's free from those things. And if you're a Christian and you don't know how to reconcile your faith with, you know, the, the products that the spirit wants to have in your life. Mm. So, we need. So anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, man of God. God, God bless you so much. I amen. Mean, I'm coming up with a session called Church Conversations. Mm. And I, I mean, me, I like to ask God a lot of questions. And so I'll be, we'll be talking about angels, we'll be talking about um, um, the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, like, mm. and practical application of scripture. So a lot of it's called Church Conversations. Hmm. So I, I, you're definitely one of the people that I'll be bringing for this. This is off lyric and song, though. This is just, <laughs> it's, it's a separate movement that I things that I feel like the pulpit is silent on, mm. um, and, and and it's causing people to err and live in error in this in this age. So I'll be raising some of those topics mm. that you know that are quiet and confusion in the church. So we'll be, we'll be talking about things like that. So anyway, sure. All too soon. Thanks. Thank I you mean, so it's much. Been, it's, it's been such a long live session. And I'm full. People of God, don't go and sleep and leave this session hanging. Go back and watch it. Because there's so much to receive from this life. 
There's bless so much you to too. receive. And, and, and yeah, and God bless you all who have stuck with us from the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yes. God bless you so much. And I told Pastor Jervis that I'm not really interested in numbers. I mean, if if a thousand or two thousand or five thousand people join the live, that would be glorious because there will be multiple impact. But even if it's one person who receives this word from the Lord, it's a grain of seed that has fallen to the ground. And mm. I know that there are many seeds and fruits in it. Yeah. And so God bless you. I see more than one Thank people you. still still on. Yes. And go with Thank this you, word. And, yeah, man of God. Just, just go with this word. Anything that you've received and just be an impact in your family, in your society, in the church, in your office. Just be an agent of change and a catalyst of change with whatever you've received today. Amen. God bless you. And man of God, I'll just say your final words and just pray over us. And we're released. Oh, let's pray. <laughs> Thank, thanks for having me, Julius. I appreciate the invitation. Um, it's a pleasure. I felt in my heart when you invited me that God wanted me to be here. So thank you for wow. uh, making this possible. And um, yeah, let's, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Eternal Father, you saw this before it came. Mm. And, and now we are living it. We invited you mm. to lead. We prayed before. Mm. But please lead us. If for any reason we didn't, we didn't fully exhaust what you thought about, Father, do the work that you've already started in the lives of the people that heard it. Yes, Father. And those who will hear it after. In the end, we want to look back at this day, at this session, and say, we did your will, Lord. We actually, yeah. we did your will. And we're limited, so we ask that please continue the work that you've begun. Bless lives, lead lives. May we see great fruit come out of what people take out of this for your glory thank you for the privilege of being christian <laughs> being mm. saved yes. so we can approach your throne with thanksgiving in our hearts thank mm. you we honor you in jesus name amen amen wow thank you so much Pastor yeah, i see dashan and people thank you all for yeah. joining us oh wow amazing Bless you guys. Wow, wow. God bless you all. It's been such an amazing time, man of God. I can't wait to have you on again. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's been power packed, I'm telling you. And I know God has touched lives and people will remember today. Yeah, Phoebe, is that. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. We'll get in touch later. <laughs> bye. Yes, bye. Bye. Okay, people of God, thank you so much for tuning in on Lyric and Song today. My guest was Pastor Jervis Jokotov, all the way from Canada. And uh, I thank God for the opportunity that he's given um, on this platform. Next weekend, we'll be having another guest on Lyric and Song, and it promises to be an amazing time. God bless you all for tuning in. I'll see you same time next weekend. Enjoy your week. God bless you. Bye. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This was brought to you by Lyric um, Levy Music Records. And we thank God for what he's doing. God bless you. Peace out. The song is out on all digital platforms. So it's also on YouTube. You can go check it out and be blessed. Bye.